Greetings, friends and potential bullies. Before Pop bravely tattled on the mob, there was a time when he had to go what wise fellas and good guys refer to as straight. <laughs> Why are you crying? I just got this hot-ass parole officer who's <laughs> making me get a regular job! <laughs> That's for getting pinched in the first place. Once Pop's shattered testes healed, he was well on his way to rehabilitation. Give me two abortions in a basket, double tap them bloody rye toast. Coming right up! First National's got a payroll coming in. You know what to do. I'm confused, Pop. I understand why you work here, but why does Cheech? The guy likes eggs. What do you want from me? Okay, but Uncle Aldo also works here, and Uncle Sammy, Tootie Marcone, and isn't that Don Gambini delivering milk? <gasps> Petey, shut up. If I didn't know better, I'd think you were still running your organization under the very nose of the New York parole system. Kid, I'm on the straight and narrow. Just trust me, will ya? You once said that trust me was gangster talk for f you. Oh, if my suspicions prove true, I will be very disappointed, Pop. Very disappointed. Thanks for waiting till my kid left. All right, hands up! This is a bust! I had to do another 18 months because of your big mouth. Now that we live in Regina, Pop works a legitimate job every day, and I've never been prouder of him. <laughs> That's for being a rat, which reminds me. <laughs> if you think I'm ever going to forgive you for that, forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it! Oh, forget about it! Petey! I know what's going on in there, and it sure ain't clean! Your son's in there, pile driving his crotch into a coma. Bust the door down! Why would you want to see that? Oh, oh my God! Pull him up! He must have fainted from shame. <laughs> what the hell? Between you and me, jerk Cousteau, that is not how you masturbate. So what the heck is an Ocean Lab 6? It's a three-month undersea education program I was accepted to. But it's prohibitively expensive. I was underwater so no one would see my tears. When it comes to my kids, there's no such thing as prohibitionally expensive. How much we talking? Whoa, yeah, that ain't happening. I've never had to say this in my life, but I can't afford that. Nice going. Now your father's drowning his sorrows in hot sauce, you selfish little prick. Leave him alone. It's not his fault I'm a workaday schmuck who can't afford underwater nerd school. <sighs> On top of that, I went and ruined my breakfast. I can help with one of them problems. I used to make this for Don Gambini. The man was a notorious overspicer. He'd cover his cannelloni in pepper flakes, and then he'd piss and moan about how hot it was. And when he pissed and moaned, chefs lost their thumbs. Holy crap, these taste like eggs again. The spice is gone. Like I said behind the Don's back, you're welcome, you whiny bitch. I think you got the solution to your money problem right there. Cookie's right. We could use this to extort every Indian restaurant in town. Pay up, or the Vindaloo gets it. Haven't you idiots figured out there's legal ways to make a buck? Course not. Luckily, I have. Now, let's go take the spice out of life. I thought your family could afford Ocean Lab. Teresa's always got so much expensive clothes and jewelry. She gets those from men I'm not supposed to tell my parents about. My family's taking me camping this weekend to cheer me up. Hey, do you want to come along? Maybe we could comfort each other in our time of mutual disappointment? I literally have no experience in this area, so I'm just gonna ask. Are you coming on to me? <laughs> no, silly. Why would I do that? What are you even talking about? Yes. Well then, I'd love to go camping. In fact, I've already pitched my tent. <laughs> Welcome to Scorpion's Hive, the publicly funded show that provides investment opportunities for private venture capitalists. Has this ever happened to you? 
Oh, no! I overspiced my food. It's burning a hole in my tongue. Jimmy? You're supposed to be at work! Agnes, get back to the office, quick! What if someone needs a map? Hey, lady. Them spices hot enough for yous? My name is Neutralizer, and I'm here to say I'm gonna take all the spice from your spices away. Spice it, yeah. Spice it down. Oh, God, stop it. <laughs> Ming's right. Just tell us about the product so we can rip your new one. It's Spice Neutralizer. You sprinkle it on overly spicy food, and it kills the heat, but not the taste. Who's your target market? Munja cake white people who can't handle a little pepper. What are your sales, figure? Hey. Wasn't I married to you once? You look terrible, Cheech. Oh, man, I walk out on you. You bad man. What's your business plan? To make a crap ton of money and send my kid to space. I import knockoff yoga pants, Belgium video game, and spices. I'm out. Bad idea. As an Irish Canadian, I wasn't even aware food could be spicy. I'm out. I like this idea. But I don't want to invest in it. I prefer to license it from you. What's that mean? It means I do all the work, assume all the risk, pay you half the profits, and you do nothing. You've always wanted to do nothing, Jimmy. Hold out for less than nothing. Are you serious, Pop? You got the money? Yep. Looks like you are going to be sleeping with the fishes. I know you didn't mean that the usual way, but I still peed my pants a little. What am I gonna tell Anna? She invited me camping so we could forget our Ocean Lab disappointment. Could you just enjoy something for once? What she don't know won't hurt her. Howdy, sir. I'm Ron, Anna's dad. This is my wife, Bathsheba. I hope you're up for a rollicking kick in the pants adventure in the wilds of Saskatchewan, Petey. <laughs> and don't worry. I'll see there's no hanky or panky between these kids. We'll keep things as chaste and pure as our Lord Jesus. I'd say have fun, but that's clearly off the table. Bathsheba, stop staring at the man like a harlot. Okay, let's hit the road. Thanks for coming, Petey. I need at least eight inches between you two back here. Move your keister over, son. Let's pass the time with music. Oh, we're going to the mansion on the Happy Day Express. And the letters on the engine are J-E-S-U-S. <laughs> what do you mean you lost the spice neutralizer recipe? Wheatin's gonna be here any minute. Just write it down again. I would, but I can't remember it. I only got so much room up here. I can't rememberize the whole recipe and the names of all the hobbits. Ah, crap, that's Wheatin. Maybe it's in my other pants. You don't have other pants. Okay, okay. I'll scratch other pants off the list. But that is a lot of zeros. Let's count them again. One. Two. If I didn't know better, I'd think you were stalling me for some reason. He's on to us. Forget it! Okay, look, Cheech lost the formula. We'll find it, we just need time. But I've already bought factories and hired sweatshop workers. Spice Neutralizer launches next week. I'm having several Spice Girls neutralized to mark the occasion. Touch Ginger and I'll cut ya! You have till Monday to produce that formula. Otherwise, I'll have to sue you for misrepresentation. Sorry, Jimmy. It's nothing personal, just business. You can't say that! That's my people saying! How does he do that? Cheech, if you don't remember that formula, Wheatin's gonna take us for everything we got. I got this, Jimmy. Trust me. Do you mean trust me, trust me, or f you trust me? The nice one. Cheech didn't lose it. Someone stole it! And I bet it was that Ming broad from Scorpion's Hive. That's classy. Blame the Asian. It's got nothing to do with being Asian! And everything to do with being Cheech's ex-wife! How much more motive does she need? She's right. You know what they say? Hell hath no flurry like a woman's corns. Are we still in Canada? I don't see this campground anywhere on the map. If you're not on the map, the government can't find you and forcibly re-educate you with the lies of the Antichrist. I see. I'm just gonna retire to my tent for the rest of the weekend. Oh, we don't use tents. We're sleeping in old Archie Bunker here. 
Do me a favor, son. Take that bag of automatic weapons from the roof rack inside. <laughs> you don't mind if I call you son, do you? We're facing Armageddon together. That makes us family. Uh, what? I'll go set up a perimeter. Oh, darn, I forgot the razor wire. Oh, well, we'll have to rely on prayers and homemade frag mines to keep Satan away. Anna, I'm trying very hard not to freak out, but have I been kidnapped? Sorry. <laughs> Every few months, Mom and Dad drag me out here to wait for the end times. I couldn't face another rapture fail without someone rational to talk to. So you picked me? Oh, that's just great. Wait, you think I'm rational? That's the hottest thing a girl's ever said to me. Petey, you're downright logical. Ah. And don't worry about my family. They're nutty, but harmless. Petey, the Bible says it's an abomination for a man to lie with another man, so you can't sleep with me in the men's quarters. <laughs> Thankfully, it says nothing about black market assault rifles. <laughs> anyway, you'll be bunking with Anna. What a friend we have in Jesus! All right. Me and Jimmy will muscle that formula away from Ming. You gals go home and sync up your cycles. We're not sending two goons in to intimidate a small boned lady. It needs a woman's touch. Give me the formula, toots, or I'll rip your freaking lips off. Jesus, Ma! What the hell big crazy bitch talking about? I'm talking Russian roulette with an automatic. Unless you start singing. Oh, Ma! Where the hell you been all my life? The formula's got to be stashed around here someplace. She comes from a very crafty culture. Isn't that a little racist, Cheech? Talk to me when you've spent three weeks in a Chinese finger trap. Oh, God! That's strong! I feel like I've been maced. Nah, mace feels worse than this. See? Oh, damn it, Cheech! What the hell is wrong with you? I'm trying to illustrate a point. Ow! <laughs> oh, my eyes! Still not as bad as Mace, but... Oh! Finish up those K-rations, kids. They'll keep for 600 years, but they do get stale. How's that filtered urine, Petey? Ha! <laughs> Someone just volunteered for first watch tonight. Petey, if anyone tries to get in, shoot first and beg the Lord's forgiveness later. <laughs> That's a joke. You won't need forgiveness for slaughtering whatever unholy abomination comes knocking. Oops, forgot the urine filter. I know this isn't what you expected, Petey, but once Mom and Dad go to sleep, maybe we can... Have a fumbling session of heavy commiserating about Ocean Lab? Very heavy. And very fumbling. Oh, God, you talk so sexy. Oh, there's plenty more inexperienced innuendo where that came from. Oh no! You shot the urine filter! <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, O'Shea did it! That leprechaun always whines about not making enough money from the TV show. All right, thanks, Ming. Sorry I pointed a gun at your head. Oh, that's nothing compared to Canadian immigration. Oh! Oh! Teresa did it! That's just great. Now she's suing us, too. Way to go, Cheech. How is this in any way my fault? Going on that crazy TV show was Cookie's idea. Don't blame me, you sack of shit. Guys, guys, calm down. We all know this is Petey's fault. No, it's Mom and Pops for having a brainiac for a son. Yeah, if he was a moron like the rest of us, this would have never happened. I screw you guys. I'm gonna go talk to O'Shea myself. Unlike you idiots, I know how to get things done. You're supposed to blow up the other guy's car, is to get things done. I'm telling you, Mokul, O'Shea's behind this. Are you suggesting the Premier is embroiled in some sort of spice neutralizer conspiracy? That's preposterous. So you're not gonna help us? Au contraire, Jimmy. I'll see this through to the end. My first step, spending nine hours on hold with your government-sponsored insurance company. For Canada, where no-fault liability means everyone gets screwed equally.
The jig's up, O'Shea. We know about your problems with Scorpion's Hive. How'd you find out? Let's just say... Ming told us. She knows? After she swore I didn't talk in my sleep? You slept with my wife? Ah, we only cuddled. <gasps> with me penis in her. Son of a bitch! Who gives a sh**? You were married three days! I've only had this shirt three days. I still don't want him sticking his dick in it. Now give us what we want, O'Shea. Security, get in here. I've got some trash to take out. Oh, right, I'll crack a window. There's something I should tell you. My pop got enough money together to send me to Ocean Lab. <gasps> I thought we were sharing our mutual sorrows. But you were just practicing holding your breath. It's not like that, Anna. I just didn't know how to tell you. Dad warned me about privileged rich boys who try to take advantage of innocent girls. Try? No. Did? Yes. <laughs> but I like you, Anna. Yay! It's finally the apocalypse! That or it's a roving band of liberals seeking to feast on our Bibles and unborn babies. Don't be afraid to kill anyone, Petey. The Bible says it's okay more often than not. Play the numbers, son. Always play the numbers. You were right, Dad! Oh, Lord! Forgive me for tongue-kissing this heretic! <laughs> Wake up! Uh, I thought I told you girls to stay home. Aren't you glad we don't listen to you very often? Teresa followed O'Shea! He's meeting with Boyas! Come on! Whoa! One more stamp and I get a free coffee! Everything's coming up cheech! I'll have to see the money before I can commit to anything, you cheap sleazy bastards. Oh, that's where my flashlight went. Not so fast, O'Shea! You're too late, you jackasses! It's done! You can't sell stolen property! <laughs> oh, God, listen to me. Yeah, right. <laughs> and violence never sold anything. <laughs> <laughs> this is getting weird. The deal's off. Now oh, look what you did! You blew me chances! Screw you, O'Shea! That spice neutralizer recipe belongs to us. What the hell are you talking about, you giant bloody festering tit? I was about to sign a deal with a rival network for my own investment show, Piranha Creek. I thought you was trying to extort me. For what? If Scorpion's Hive found out about Piranha Creek before I jumped ship, they'd gnaw the flesh off the deal's meaty bones. Wait, which one of you is the piranha? It's Canadian television, Jimmy. We all are. Oh, Christ. Now I'm stuck on that low-paying show. Hey, would you look at that? Look at that indeed. Tabby's mom is looking pretty fine. How do you like that, Petey? The Gupta family here was under the impression the age of Kali Yuga was ending. That's the Hindu apocalypse. Between you and me, these kooks put the mental in fundamental. Everyone knows the end of times is a Christian Armageddon. Sorry about the gunshot wound, Mr. Gupta. That's the thing with timeshare apocalypse bunkers. <laughs> They're affordable, but the scheduling's a pain in the rump. <laughs> I'll go take down the perimeter. I'm glad no one stepped on a frag mine. That could have been very messy. <laughs> Lucky I'm good at digging mass graves. Please, God, tell me that was a joke. It won't be one day. Anna, listen, I'm sorry I didn't tell you about Ocean Lab. And I'm sorry I called you a heretic. So, will I see you at school? No. Mom saw us making out, and now she wants to send me away until the baby comes. What? I know. But guess where they're sending me? I'm okay! A mine went off! Arm seems to be gone! If I pass out before we reach the hospital, be sure to refuse a transfusion! <laughs> <laughs> Going somewhere, Toby? Ah! Ah! You've come for vengeance! Make it quick! Not the face! Open casket! 
Who's gonna rub Mother's feet? Calm down! Pull yourself together! Thank you, Jimmy. I deserve that. A and probably that, too. Now you're just doing it for fun! Stop it, Jimmy! It's my turn! Ow! You Ow! stole my yeah. formula, didn't you? Yes, at the TV studio. I knew Jimmy would quit Regina Tourism once he got rich. <laughs> I couldn't face work without my best friend in the whole wide world. <laughs> Who? Me? But I had a change of heart and left the recipe in your car. Mom insisted on coming with me. It was too late to put out the fire, so I grabbed Mom, stopped, dropped, and rolled her, and we took off. But you saved the recipe, right? No, it went up with your car. Ah, great, I'm screwed. Thanks a lot, you stupid son of a bitch. Lucky it's easy to remember. Baking soda, flour, vanilla extract, and... A dash of cumin. I don't know why that was so hard to remember, Cheech. Oh, yeah? Go on, ask me. Which one's Frodo? I have your brand new SUV courtesy of Saskatchewan Government Insurance. <gasps> Canada's worst driver. I must have left it in gear. Put on a pot of coffee, Cookie. I'm going back on hold. Yo, Cook, I got Petey on Skype. I hate it here. I've been seasick for three weeks. Don't worry, Mr. and Mrs. McDougal. I'll take care of him. I hope you kids are being good down there under the sea. Well, Mrs. McDougal, I won't lie to you. Ah, getting screwed in a submarine. It's like he's in the Navy for real. La 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 Doing. Actually, who cares? Shut up and let me talk. To me, crime is like any other business, except with more killing and less resumes. Yet both use an equal amount of paper clips. It don't matter if you're a banker or a good fella. You still gotta climb the corporate ladder. Jimmy, give me a ride to the track. I'm feeling lucky. Ah! And can I borrow your pants? Unless you're Cheech. He always had a different career philosophy. I'm telling you, Jimmy, the key to success is aiming for the middle. You mean like a gut shot? I mean your career. If you're on the bottom, you're always gonna get stepped on. Ain't that right, Mario? Did you have to wear cleats? I can't find my regular face stepping shoes. Anyhow, if you aim for the top, you got a long way to fall. Like that time I tried doing it on a Ferris wheel? That was a fall from Grace. <laughs> Remember Grace, Jimmy? With the cans? Later, I saw what Cheech meant. <laughs> How'd it go? See? Gambini'd still be alive if he just aimed a little lower in life. Or if Jimmy aimed for the wall instead of the window. You do understand, Mr. Middleman, that you're the reason I had to kill him. Understanding is for overachievers. Well, you aimed us to the middle of nowhere, you stinking mook! <laughs> you stupid! If you think I'd kill Gambini all over again to save Cheech's half-assed ass... <laughs> forget about it. Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy and the capo with the Gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he'd take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite. Wasn't much along till the mob all wants him dead. So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds. The feds will say they helped if they could use him as a pawn. So he ratted out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. Only four weeks left of summer break. You can do this, Cookie. You can totally do this. Yo, Ma, we're out of pork rinds. So what? Get up off your butts and go buy some more. But we want to find out if this broad says yes to the dress. Y'all got anything more see-through? What a day. I'm running out of ways to look busy at work. 
Nice example, Jimmy. No wonder the kids lays around all day. Take it easy. Lazing around is what summer break is for. Now, how about some pork rinds for daddy? We ate them all. You kids bum around all day on my sofa, watching my TV, eating my pork rinds, and you can't even bother to tell your mother to go and buy more? That's it! You're all getting summer jobs! Hey, where'd they go? You! Get your resume together! <laughs> I can't get a job. I've been fired from everyone I've ever had. Welcome to the meat pit. Before you order, here's a video of where your hamburger came from. Uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> Would you care for fries with your massacre? The only place I'm fit to work is in a science lab, or perhaps some sort of theoretical think tank. So, if you'll excuse me. Not so fast. You're coming with me, Steve No Jobs. Congratulations, Petey. You had the best and only application in our summer hiring spree. Agnes, bring Nemo around. You're going to be pointing out all the exciting Regina landmarks as our summer tour bus barker. Go put all them acting classes to work, kid. Teresa took the acting classes. Don't you know me at all? Whoopee! Summer's officially begun. You're a tour buff, McCool? Ah, there's nothing like being regaled with Regina's tantalizing history in an open-top bus whilst the wind tickles your scalp. Welcome to showbiz, Petey. No stop, so here's a travel mug to pee in. <laughs> If you look to your left, you'll see one of Regina's most, um, prestigious grain elevators. Imagine the grain that's been elevated here. And this one is... red. Sexy. And now we will end with a dip in Regina's historical municipal outdoor pool. <laughs> that's the whole tour? Two grain elevators in a swimming pool? Look, everyone, there's a jellyfish in the pool. No, that's a tampon. So, how was the job hunt? Oh, it was, uh, brutal. Yeah, yeah, we had to fill out applications in, like, triplication. <laughs> Do I smell fake butter topping? Are those popcorn crumbs? Aha! Movie tickets! You weren't out looking for jobs. You were out seeing Paranormal Activity 10, same shit, different house. It was a scary documentary. That wasn't real, Teresa. You're such a sucker. Oh, there's tons of suckers out there who want to connect with the spirit world. Uh, here we go. Back in my Madam Scamia days, I fleeced marks every which way from Sunday. I got an idea how we can make money off of that paranormal crap. Ew, no way I'm touching ghost poo. How are you not in summer school right now? I slip my homework in with Petey's. He does it without even noticing. Does anyone know how many pounds of grain one of these elevators can hold? Anyone? Would you keep it down? Thank you, sir. He was talking to you. Oh. I could say just about anything and it wouldn't matter. This park on your right is where a real Bigfoot was seen drunk, snacking on a number of small dogs. And uh, this wheat field is known as Area 55 huh? because a UFO crashed here back in the 50s. The aliens were buried, and the next year, the crop was blue. Next up, we're heading to Regina's most deadly deciduous, otherwise known as the Murder Tree. Ooh, can we have a picnic there? Sure, but it might make a picnic of you. <gasps> Sorry, folks, this tour is full, but there will be another one tomorrow. Wowzers, Petey's really turned the tour around. People actually care what my know-it-all kid has to say? We can finally crack open the I Heart Regina shirts and wear them without people laughing at us. Mademoiselle Konya, at your service. Oh, thank God. It started yesterday, just after your pamphlet conveniently appeared in our mailbox. Please, help us. Silence! Spirits, announce yourselves. Ooh. <laughs> ah! Ah! The spirits. 
spirit is really pissed about something you did in your past. Oh, God! Is this about the elderly man I ran over in college and blamed on my boyfriend who then committed suicide in prison? Uh, yes. And it'll be 300 bucks to bust this ghost. Double it. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I meant 600. Great news, everyone. This has all been a terrible dream. Regina tourism numbers are through the roof thanks to the initiative of one particular employee. Premier O'Shea has commissioned yours truly to announce a promotion for the aforementioned go-getter. I owe it all to the Executive Success Self-Awareness Rodeo at Lake Waskasu. Introducing the new staff supervisor of Regina Tourism, Petey McDougal! Huh? Petey? I knew I should have signed up for the self-esteem booster derby! Stupid Toby! Stupid, stupid, stupid! Now that you're running the office, Petey, you may want some help running the tours. Boo! Someone with a deep passion for Regina history and 96 vacation days saved up. Hint, hint. No, no! I'm still running the tours. I wouldn't want you exposing my lies. I mean, wasting your time. You might be my boss, but you're not the boss of me. <laughs> oh, look! It's time for me to avoid confrontation. <laughs> Agnes, you ready for another bus tour? Look at you! Rising to the top of Regina tourism. For once, my pride in you outweighs my shame. Thanks, but the other employees seem a bit disgruntled. Could you smooth things over for me? Sure thing. And you know what's great about you being my boss? I don't have to call in sick no more. I can just shout from the couch. <laughs> You're funny. Thanks, Pop. Who's joking? Yo, Topes, I know my family taking over the business comes as a shock. Very perceptive. Percepticon. Give the kid a chance, will ya? You were once the guy on top. It's not his fault you blew it. Well, now that I'm not the boss anymore, I guess I can finally let my hair down. Schnapps, it's Peach. To Petey. Whatever. Look at all this money. I can finally buy myself a unicorn. Those things are extremely rare. You ain't buying nothing. We gotta keep Ma in the dark about this or she'll try and horn in. So keep your yap shut. I won't say nothing, as long as you cut me in. The only thing I'll be cutting is your tongue out. Oh, cookie. All right, fine, but you better pull your weight. I'm already carrying one useless moron on this caper. Yeah! Oh, cookie. I said all right, what are you doing? Nothing. It's time for my bed. Petey! We were just talking about your best son, who's my boss I ever had. <laughs> Is this what you meant by getting Toby on my side? You're drunk! You're drunk! <laughs> <laughs> it smells like peaches, beans, and insubordination in here. Knock, knock. Who's there? How? <laughs> I'm writing you both up for drinking on the job. That's an Article 48. And breaking wind in front of a superior. That is a 22. We were just toasting to celebrate your promotion. Tell it to the naughty corner, McDougal. I ain't sitting in no naughty corner. And since when do we have a naughty corner? Shut it. Things better change around here or the staff will. <sighs> uh... Agnes, adjust Article 26 in your purse. I'm sorry, Pop, but I had to make an example of someone. You humiliated me in front of everybody. Go to your room. You're grounded. You can't ground me. I'm your boss. At work, you're the boss. At home, I'm the boss. Oh, yeah? Well, just you wait till we get to work tomorrow. Yeah? You just wait till we get home from work tomorrow! Which will be around midnight, because you'll be working late.
See? I gave you a boost. I'm already paying for myself. <laughs> you can make scarier noises than that. You sound like Pop putting on his shoes. I'm stuck. Get me out of here. Go on. Bring back our little butterball. <laughs> Easy! You're gonna pull my arm off! This is ruining my hair! <clears throat> what the hell are you doing in here? I got scared out there alone. I hear this house is haunted. Just back out so we can start the scam. <clears throat> I'm stuck! <laughs> oh, I'm calling the psychic! Happy birthday, former subordinate! Jesus! That thing's more fireball than cake! How old are you? What's this? An office birthday party? Why wasn't I invited? I like cake. I like singing. You know what? Regina tourism includes everyone in birthday celebrations. Everyone or no one! <laughs> I fucking hate that guy. I gotta live with him. That must be about as fun as a chapped ass on a long bike ride. Let me tell you something about Boss Man. He once created an app named Roxy to call his phone every day so people would think he had a girlfriend. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, Mr. Big Shot's too good for blow-up dolls. And get this, he still sleeps with plastic sheets. <laughs> I stopped wetting the bed in my 20s. Oh, it gets better. Whenever he watches scary movies, he has to sleep in our bed. <laughs> All right, McDougal, I've had it with your attitude. You're fired! What? Oh, hey, Roxy. Now's not a good time. Can I call you back, babe? <laughs> <laughs> We're out of pork rinds. So go to the store and get some. But I want to see if she says yes to the dress. The dad's a cheapo and I think he's about to have a stroke. Huh? There he goes. What a day. Someone pooped in my desk. Guess I owe Toby five bucks. Can you turn on the news, please? And get your feet off the couch. But my big fat Alaskan gypsy lumberjack wedding is on next. When you work all day, you can watch whatever moronic show you want. That's not fair! Petey, for Christ's sake, just hire your father back! Why would I hire a guy who thinks the photocopier is an ass camera? Yeah, well, I wouldn't go back even if you paid me. And by the way, I'm still getting paid. Of course you are. It's a Canadian government job. <laughs> How do you drink this stuff? <laughs> Where's Mademoiselle Kanya? I left her a message hours ago. I'm calling again. I told you we shouldn't have left our phones in the car. The last thing we need is you texting some meathead boy toy while we're working. Don't be stupid. Big Mike can't read. Ah, oh, I'm starving. Help! Get us out of here! Shut up! Why should he? Aside from losing a little weight, there's no plus side to being trapped in here. have so much character. If these walls could talk... Well, they're talking now, Dan! Happy! You hear that? <clears throat> you had your freaking phone the whole time? I was saving the battery for selfies. Quick, the battery's dying. Who are you calling? I'm calling Ma to come and get us. Crook, before you do anything, bring us a jumbo cheese and answer me. Agnes, I need us to pull together as a team, okay? There is no I in team. But you can spell me with part of it and Ta with the other part. Great news, Petey. Premier O'Shea wants the tours bumped up to 12 a day. What? I suppose this means a few Regina After Dark tours. Sounds positively tantalizing. For Canada! Where lusting over a moonlit grain elevator is about to become a thing! Is he kidding? You guys are really gonna have to pull up your socks. Wait! Where are you going? To the liquor store to pull up her socks, you dick! 
Jeez, kid, you look terrible. Don't start. I'm not in the mood. Look, I'm not saying this as a disgruntled former employee that you totally screwed over. I'm saying this as your pop. You gotta quit. I can't. I just can't. Sure you can. You walk into your own office, you drop a deuce on the desk, and you strut out like a man. What's so hard about- Because I lied! I made up fake Regina history so the tour would be more exciting. You bullcrap the whole thing? I'm impressed. If my lies are exposed, I'll be a laughing stock. I'm just gonna have to run the tour for the rest of my life. You're being a little dramatic. I'm glad to see them acting lessons paid off. That was Teresa! <sighs> Goodbye Ivy League PhD scholarship, hello basement apartment and TV dinners in my dirty underwear. That reminds me, where's Cheech? Look. I'm proud of you, son. You rose to the top on lies, and you'll do anything to protect a scam. Just like a true Falcone. But... <sighs> oh, poor kid. Seriously, though, where the hell's Cheech? Where the hell's everybody? Ah, oh, yes. The spirits are present, and they are... Stalling! Poor things don't know they crossed over. Probably died because they cut the wrong person out of a job. Can you get rid of them? Yes. But you must leave this place so I have a clear channel with the little shits. I mean spirits. You know, I should leave you three up there to rot for not cutting me in on this. It was them, Cook. I begged. I pleaded. But they wouldn't have you. Nice impression of Pop, you rat. I've been running spirit scams longer than all of you. Fine, sorry. Now get us out of here and we'll give you... 30%. 70. 50. Have a nice afterlife. Wait, don't go. 80%, we got a deal. Deal. Cheech! Get ready to cross over to the other side! <laughs> you hit Cheech in the face. Rumor has it, <gasps> that's where the wheat pirates buried their treasure before sailing back to Alberta. What is it, Pop? Too bad the bus didn't start, huh, son? You're welcome. What are you talking about? I cut the starter cable so you wouldn't have to do the tour. No bus, no tour. Bingo, bango, you're off the hook. I'm driving the bus right now with a bunch of tourists. In fact, I just drove through a red light. Pop, you cut the brake line. Well, I cut something and would appreciate a thank you. I can't stop, I can't stop. That's the floor where they shot Titanic. Gordon Life, I gotta hop it on that bed. That silence full of candy. There's a bunch of zombies in that house. Ooh, zombies. You're headed right for the lake! It's okay, Pop. This is an amphibious bus. I don't know what that means. It's a bus and a boat. <laughs> yeah, right. You all right, kid? Better than the boss. Ah! Oh, my God! Zombies! <sighs> so hungry. Best tour ever. I suppose the lesson here is that one should never lie to get ahead in a work situation. Nah, the lesson is you should always have a fool guy to blame in case you get caught. No, it's that you should never cut your mother out of a good scam. Would you guys shut up? We can't hear the TV. Pick a fucking dress already. They're all the same. This dress is so tight. Can you help me take it off? Oh! Ah! What the hell are we watching? Say yes. Oh, God, yes, yes to the dress. I promised myself I wouldn't cry. But it's so beautiful. La 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 la
Greetings, citizens. The Falcone family aren't the only ones who had an old life. Before I became a witness protector, I was head of Saskatchewan Crime Scene Investigations. And that's when he slipped on the ice and hit his head. I suppose one could say... I hope he says it was an icy reception. It was an unfortunate accident. Give him time, he'll get better at these. Sadly, my fellow officers watched too much TV and expected me to entertain them. Looks like he had a heart attack while going through the car wash. I guess he's all... Washed up. Say washed up. Done getting his car washed. <sighs> this guy is boring. Shortly thereafter, I was pulled off CSI detail because I refused to belittle police work with corny one-liners and catchphrases. <laughs> For Canada, where self-awareness isn't our strong suit. I wonder where he goes when he takes off like that. Forget about it. Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy and the capo with the gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite. Wasn't much along till the mob all wants him dead. So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds. The feds will say they heard that they could use him as a pawn. So he ratted out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. Oh, forget about it. Thank you, Jaden's father, for telling us about your exciting job with Canada's space program. <laughs> and now, from Regina Tourism, let's do our best to welcome Mr. McDougal. Why didn't anyone run this by me? Webster's Dictionary defines tourism as a neurological disorder characterized by compulsive utterances of obscenities. That's Tourette's, you stupid, illiterate f***. Huh? Oh, oh, uh, right. Uh, we all know why the chicken crossed the road, but do you know how? With the help of tourism. That's... Too bad you can't tell him about your old job. The one you crapped all over to become a paper-pushing desk monkey in a fake-o industry made up by the government. Ooh, you're a senator. Screw you. I work for a living. Yeah, like every other sucker. You make me want to puke. <laughs> Thanks for helping me practice driving. But why the disguise? If I'm seen with a full-on nerd, the other kids will think I'm downtrending. I am not a full-on nerd. Oh my god, look at that cumulonimbus cloud! It looks like Schrodinger's cat! <gasps> Victoria Huntersmith. The kind of girl guys like me admire from afar, but never, ever get to speak to. At least that's what the principal told me at orientation. Forget the insurance! Just get out and start punching yourself in the balls as a sign of inferiority! Hey, I know you from school. You're one of the total losers who... Whoa, is that your girlfriend? Who, her? She's gorgeous. What's your name? Petey. You're kinda cute. Sorry I rammed you from behind. Maybe you can ram me from the front sometime. See you at school. Why'd she leave? Why isn't she suing and or humiliating you? I have no idea what just happened. Ha! Who's the dumb one now? Gina's right, I'm a loser. I used to run a crime syndicate. Now all I do is run out of pencils. Which reminds me, Toby told me to order more pencils. Where's my pencil? Here, stuff a couple of these down your pants to fill the void. Oh, very funny. It's not my fault nothing ever happens down at Regina Tourism. The Jimmy I know doesn't wait for nothing to happen. He makes nothing happen. And when the chips are down, my money's on him. Every time. Really? Yeah. You were once the king of New York. There's no reason you can't be the king of vagina. Regina, but whatever. Take the full weight of balls, Jimmy. All right, let's do this. Ah! First thing tomorrow. Oh, yeah, no, it's getting kind of late. Hey, Pete. Wow, I'm a Pete now. 
Want to hang out, or will your hot mystery girlfriend get jealous? Oh, uh, she doesn't even go to this school. Ooh, then what she doesn't know won't hurt her. Come with me. Are you skipping? What? No, I tripped on something. Rhythmically, several times in succession, not skipping. Hey, guys, this is Pete. I'm confused. Why am I here and not being stuffed into that garbage can, for example? You know how you look at someone and they're like a total loser? Only in the mirror. But then you see them in another light and suddenly they're really interesting. <sighs> it's too bad you have a girlfriend. Who knew pretend dating my own sister would have a downside? And so I present to you our new promotional campaign, Regina, now with 30% less black flies. You want to bring some real tourism to this backwater burg? Talk to me. Um, this is Jimmy, whom we can thank for the pencils we're using. Pencils. Oh, pencils. Uh, fellas, pencils. I got an idea that'll bring so much money into this town, the black flies will be driving Bentleys. And I can sum it up in one word. Gun show? Apple reunion? Porno convention? How about all of those and more? Hit it, Cheech! Ah. I got a plan that just won't lose. So drop the beavers, flies, and moose. The crowds will come on planes and rockets with tons of cash to line up pockets. A rub and tug on every block? Dabernak, not sure with rock. Legalizing marijuana? We could be like Tijuana. That ain't it, you stupid rubes. No blowing loads of smoking dupes. They got these joints in Vegas and Reno. You know what I mean. It's a... It's a... Huh? Rhymes with Reno? Uh... Holocaust Museum? No, you jackass! It's a casino! <laughs> There's no one here, Schwa. I hope you have a song for how we're gonna pay for all this, Schwa. Oh my god, I blew it, Cook. I think I really am a schnook. That's the spirit, Jimmy. Keep singing! Don't fold them just yet, Jimmy. Like I said, when the chips are down... <laughs> I always bet on you! Oh, Jimmy? Hey, sweetie. You want to get out of here? <sighs> sure, Cheech. Whoa, Cook! Sorry, I thought you was a hooker. <laughs> Amazing work, Jimmy. Fun fact, in Canada, profits from gambling are reinvested in health, education, and infrastructure. That fact is nowhere near fun. What are you doing here, anyway? Don't you got a gambling problem? It's Horse. He's excited about the casino, but I worry it might prove overwhelming for him. There's an old saying in the casino business, McCool. Who gives a shit? It's a fucking horse. I got three Japanese businessmen cleaning up the blackjack. Want me to pep and yucky their faces? Don't bother. I sent in a cooler. Bust. Heart attack. Oh. Space debris. That old prick's lifetime losing streak is finally paying off. Hey, go tell that slob at the poker table about our dress code. It would be my pleasure. Look at you, Mr. Casino Manager. <laughs> I'm so proud of you. Maybe you got a little something for the person who inspired all this? Hmm? Oh, <laughs> I know what you mean. Follow me. Gonna kill you to wear a tie? This is my thanks? A job at the coat check? I also got a tip. Lose the attitude. It's bad for business. Yo, Gazangas. I want you to show Mr. Takamori here a good time. Need I remind you that I'm your mother, young lady? Need I remind you that I'm your boss, sugar tits? You are so grounded after I punch out tonight. Hey, Pete. I just wanted to tell you that mystery girl dumped me. So I'm single and ready to tingle. Uh, Petey, that's not cool. Oh, don't worry about me. I'm fine. Hey, you called me Petey. What happened to Pete? Pete got dumped. Cool kids never get dumped. We do the dumping. 
like this. <laughs> you guys are really good at this. I haven't touched the side once. Hear that silence? It's how things sounded before white people came. I sure hope they come back soon. Oh, it's a dark day when we're asking for the whiteies to return. Yo, Pop, Crybaby here's got a beef. You stole my customers, Jimmy. I can almost taste the food you're taking from my children's mouths. I'm just giving people what they want, Terry. By that, I mean loose slots, not, you know, starving kids. Could you give me some tips? I'd love to help you, but I can't. Because I'm native? No, because you're my competition. Why do you guys always get so racial? Funny, you get that way after you've been beat down for centuries. Look. I'll make it up to you. We got a nice steakhouse here. You'll always have a reservation. Oh, you're hilarious, Jimmy. What? What did I say? What are you doing here, Terry? Getting screwed by your husband. It's been so friggin' long, I almost forgot what that's like. If I could get in to see him, I'd punch his fat face. I had to slip Gina 50 bucks. Why didn't I think of that? Come on, let's have a drink. Okay, but you're buying. I can't, I gave Gina all my money. If this works, I'll be back at the cool table with Victoria before you know it. Be right back. Hmm, this should cover Jetsy's high nipples. <gasps> this is not what it looks like. I'm just trying on your bra to see if it'll fit Jetsy. Those are my swimming goggles. Well, where have you been all my life? Anyone ever tell you you could be a model? <laughs> so if I break up with Jetsy in front of everyone, I might have a shot with Victoria. That's the dumbest thing I ever heard. There's no way Jetsy could play Mystery Girl. What else am I supposed to do? Use the actress who originated the role. You do that for me? Of course. Every great star gives back to the underprivileged. Now here's my contract. This is a stereo warranty. I'm playing along, can't you? Look at you, you degenerate gambling lowlife. I gave you two grand mark and you blew it already! <laughs> if you shrug them weird horsey shoulders at me again, I swear your head's gonna wind up in someone's bed. Think I'm joking? <laughs> Try me, motherfucker. Okay, okay, I've got him, Gina. Come on, old friend. I'll take you home. You've crapped out. Literally, I'm afraid. For Canada! Where even the hopelessly addicted get a free ride! Why the hell are we so empty? Cheech probably cooled the whole joint. Nah, he called in sick today. Well, word on the street is the Blackpool Casino's really cleaning up. Maybe I should go over there for a little powwow. Did you hear yourself? Show some sensitivity, will ya? Go watch Pocahontas or some sh**. How you doing? You can spice in my joint? I'll beat it out of ya, I swear. Mark my words! Ho-ho! Is that a shrimp boat? Well, Jimmy, looks like the moccasins on the other foot. Part of the rebranding. Free moccasins for everyone. Huh? Jeez, what the hell are you doing here? Hey, Jimmy! I mean, uh... <coughs> this is not the doctor's office. Oh, Jimmy, stop! She made an offer I couldn't refuse. Working for tips. What do you mean, she? Take your hands off my crap stealer, Jimmy. Cookie? What are you doing here? I'm running this joint. Oh, yeah. Hey, Takamura. Yes. I told you she was lucky. The hell do you know about running a casino anyway? More than you, I worked in Atlantic City. On the boardwalk, guessing people's weight. To these guys, that's the big time. And it beats working the coat check. That's what this is about? Fine. If you don't like the coat check, we'll find you something in the kitchen. Get out of my office. I'm warning you. If you don't quit right now, I will bury this casino. Like you buried your face in that shrimp boat? Bring it on, fat man. Oh, that's me. I got a new ringtone. Hello? Hey, Jetsy, how you doing? So come on down to Saskatchewan Casino, where we don't have roaches infesting our buffet. We don't have roaches, but we do have the loosest slots in town. 
We also got the loosest sluts in town. <laughs> Ain't that right, sweetie? This week at Saskatchewan Casino, the incredible Kevin will give every audience member a new car. <laughs> new car, my ass. They're ripping them off from my parking lot, see? But you won't care about that when you're cruising the skies of Regina in our new free helicopter tour. plane cost me? But do I care? No. Cause this week at Saskatchewan Casino, we've got Canadian rock legends The Guess Who. <laughs> Tribute band? <laughs> the Guess Whom? Cook, I can't take this no more. Let's call a truce. Your casino takes senior citizens and welfare moms. I'll take guys cutting loose on business trips. Who gets all the chronic gamblers? We'll divvy them up with some kind of lottery which they will no doubt gamble on. Cheech, tell this ungrateful egomaniac to go f himself. But edit the swear for the kid's sake. Cheech, can you also ask Jetsy to call me? I miss him. She's known as Juicy now, and I took away her cell phone. Speaking of Juicy, did anyone ever tell you that you could be an escort? That's Teresa! Oh, I didn't recognize you, kid. It's cause I'm in character. Come on, Petey, let's go to make out points. Have fun, kids! Wait, what did she say? Come on, Cheech. We gotta pick up our headliners at the airport. I don't wanna keep Paul and Ringo waiting. <gasps> Hear that? She's got the Rolling Stones. It's time to pull out the big gun. I meant it metaphorically. Put this back in the garage. So this is make-out point, Regina style. Let's begin. <clears throat> so, what did you want to talk to me about, Petey? You look so serious. I brought you here so I can officially dump you. Um, did we land on a name? You are dumping me, Anastasia Champagne Superstar? Oh, Christ, we did. You sleep with my mother, you kill my father, kick my dog and steal our family fortune, leaving us homeless and prostitute. Destitute! Okay, good texture, but roll it back a little. Yes, I am dumping you, Anastasia! <gasps> <gasps> what the <gasps> hell? Where did you get that? The garage. Where else? I won't live without you. None of this is in the script. I'm an artist. I improvised. Yeah. On second thought, if I can't have you, no one will. Teresa, would you stop? Did he say Teresa? <gasps> oh my god, that's Teresa McDougal. <gasps> Petey's dating his own sister! Huh? <gasps> that is so gross! Fucking inbred Scottish weirdos! <laughs> and scene! Webster's Dictionary defines impossible as the act of placing private property in custody of an officer of the law. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Saskatchewan Casino is pleased to bring you from the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean, the Titanic. Paul and Ringo Chang's miniature rodeo was a total bust. Hello, Stonehenge? to ship them rocks to Canada. You druid motherfuckers want to play hardball? I got the hardest balls in town. Hey, Cook. Listen, I can't run the casino no more. I'm gonna ask Toby to transfer me back to my desk job. Yay! Oh, really? So you beat me, and you're retiring before I get a chance Look. to... Oh, that's sweet and gross. Now look over there. That's the guy who ran the casino on this tub. That'll be me if we keep this up. You gonna die on a boat? No, I'll be alone. I wouldn't have had any of this if it wasn't for you believing in me. Was that so hard? 
You had to raise the freaking Titanic to avoid showing me a little gratitude? And look at those stupid skeletons. Oh, the ship's sinking. I better go have a nap. Morons. Come here, babe. Jeez, what were the odds of that thing going down again? Unsinkable, my ass. Hey, guys, any chance I... <laughs> <sighs> I guess tis better to have loved and lost your own sister than never to have... Ugh, no, that's not right. Teresa, why aren't you being ostracized? Because I don't use words like ostrich-sized and I don't fool around with my sister, you sick pervert! But fooling around with your brother is okay? It is if you're hot. I don't make the rules, Petey. Wish I had a brother to fool around with. That is so gross! Did I just wake up in crazy town? Neither of you works at a casino no more? Sweetie, with Pop's casino gone, the Black Paw don't need me. You mooks threw away the best thing that ever happened to us. You know what would make you feel better? Do not condescend to me, Ma. Ha! It's condensate. Who's the banana now, Gina? All right. How about you hop up on this here bed? And help us count all the money we skimmed. Uh, <laughs> why'd you have to get all mushy on me? Anyone seen Cheech, by the way? And who's giving the bride away? I am, Your Majesty. <laughs> Pull yourself together. He's a good catch. Freeze! That bride is underage! Good luck, Juicy! I'm keeping the dowry! La 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 like this one time back in New York? Hey, Ma! Pops! Where is everybody? The rest of the family was in such a rush to get to Coney Island, they left me! Home alone! So it was up to me to protect our house and have a little fun. I was expecting a kid to set cute little traps. This is almost too easy. Easy? You know, when you say that, you really devalue what we do. Yeah, I don't like kitty movies. All that violence. It's so fake. When it comes to violence, I prefer what Petey would call realism. Don't bother begging for mercy. Oh, my poor baby. I'm so... What the hell? Crap. Busted. Gina, how many times I gotta tell you? Not in the house. You're gonna get us all pinched. Anyway, now that we live in the most boring town on the planet, I'm gonna make my own fun. Ma, I'm going out. Don't forget your mittens. Is anyone else concerned that she's... Forget about it! Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy and the capo with the gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he'd take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite. Wasn't much along till the mob all went in dead. So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds. The feds would say they helped if they could use him as a pawn. So he ratted out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. Hey, who threw out a thermometer? <gasps> it's a pregnancy tester. Cheech, look at this. What's the little minus sign mean? Oh, it's negative. Means a baby's coming. You sure? Sure, I'm sure. You want another snot in those brat running around? No. Pregnant equals negative. Holy crap, Cookie's pregnant? I can't be a father again. I barely survived the first three. You want my advice? Pretend to be happy about this. Then, when she goes to bed, you skip town like a fucking gypsy. 
<gasps> There's my beautiful wife. If you was barefoot, this picture would be perfect. Okay, what'd you do? Ooh, was that a kick I felt? No, it was last night's eggplant pump. What's wrong with you? You fall in the shower or something? No, I'm talking about our baby. <gasps> Jimmy, this test is negative. I was a little late and just, you know, wanted to be sure. But I ain't pregnant. Nobody's pregnant. Oh, thank you, baby Jesus. This is the happiest day of my life. Next time, I'll pull out earlier so you don't gotta worry. <gasps> Don't you move, young lady. That's not mine. It's for a friend. She had a little scare, but everything's fine. Oh, really? What's your friend's name? Teresa? Your father found this. If he knew it was yours, he'd slap a chastity belt on you and swallow the key. Lucky for you, I covered for you. Phew. Dodge that bullet. Thanks, Ma. Not so fast, Teresa Maria Falcone. We're not done here. Not by a long shot. Will you relax? You should just be glad I'm not pregnant. Now we don't have to guess who the father is. Oh! Think before you talk, Teresa. What are you doing? They're gonna need your measurements down at the nunnery. Hey, McCool, thanks for meeting me. We had a little scare and I'm gonna need some rubbers. A case a week should do. Don't tell God. <sighs> Can't you just buy them at the drugstore? What? You could just walk in and buy them up here? In the old neighborhood, you needed a sit down with Father O'Malley and the doctor's note. I had a connection upstate. One of the first guys to carry the French tickler. Are we finished here, Jimmy? McCool, what gives? Who died? Oh, just my career. A letter intended for my lady friend was mistakenly mailed to Premier O'Shea's office. So slap the mailman around. A fellow civil servant? Never. The problem is the letter contained photos of me. Playfully erotic ones. Oh! Ooh. When the Premier returns from his trade mission to Las Vegas, I'll be fired. Or at the very least, reassigned to one of Canada's bleaker outposts. Like Toronto. You ought to text your dirty pictures, like I do. A true gentleman does not text boudoir photographs to a lady. It's a picture of your bing bong. Quit trying to class it up. You're right. There's nothing classy about what I did. For Canada, where all degenerates wind up in Toronto. Poor bastard. You know, if we steal them pictures back for him and save his job, he'll owe us big time. Let's do it. We'll be ass deep in French ticklers. Can you believe she's making me wear an ankle monitor? Be careful what you say with that thing. It has speech recognition. Anything about boys and or sex and you get a shock. Even by mom's standards, it's a bit draconian. My social life is falling apart and you're talking about Star Trek? I'm only allowed to go to school and then straight home. What am I gonna do? Maybe focus on all the great things you can do at school. That's what got me in this mess. No, I mean an after-school club. Club, huh? Photography, full. Drama club, full. Witchcraft for beginners, full. All the good clubs are full. What's future business leaders? I thought it was a recruiting front for the conservative party, but it's just a club where you learn about sales and marketing. Ooh, maybe they'll be cute boys. <laughs> You're late. I told you to come straight home from school. I was doing school stuff. I joined the Future Business Leaders Club. Oh, please, you don't fool me for a second. You're just trying to stay away from here as long as possible. I'll have you know I am full of what do they call them? Viable Consumer Innovations. You're full of something, all right. Tomorrow, you come straight home from school. None of this phony club crap, you hear me? But, Mom, the one time I'm not lying, and you- End of discussion. Oh, yeah? I'm gonna come up with an idea that's gonna knock your socks off. You wanna knock my socks off? Get your virginity back! <laughs> Gotta think of a product. Show her. Think. 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 God, thinking's hard. And so is this chair. My butt's killing me. Europa. I think I got it. What's going on in here? I'm taking the lead on the O'Shea heist, Jimmy. So what's with these mooks? It's the team. I call them Cheech's Eleven. Minus six. Wait, how many of us are there? Not including me. 
What's wrong with you? We're stealing some mail, not robbing a casino. Why are you always gonna stomp on my ideas? Mainly because they're insane. But I already gave everybody code names in case we get pinched. This here is Mr. Red. You're a freaking racist. Race ain't got nothing to do with it. Now sit down, Geronimo. This is Mr. Brown, because he smells like a toilet. All right, Dale, I mean Mr. Red. You're gonna shoot an arrow through the window so I can shimmy up. But I'm terrible with a bow and arrow. I thought you said you was an engine. I thought this was gonna be a sex orgy. All right, meeting's over. Cheech, you ain't in charge no more. Well, I had a good run. Today's modern woman faces many challenges, but none compare to the very real problem of BAS, bony ass syndrome. Oh, here we go. Ladies and awkward teen boy, I give you... Hang on. Ass jacks! Whoa, I'd love to get one of those for my girlfriend. If I, you know, had a girlfriend. Hey, this is fun. Now I see why guys like these so much. Teresa, it's great you're applying yourself to something besides boys, but this is the stupidest thing I ever seen. Well, Ma, the stupidest thing you've ever seen is setting the Twitterverse on fire. Who the hell goes on the internet to look for big butts? Judging from Ask Jax's followers, flat-bottom girls with low self-esteem who want to jack up their asses. And a lot of dirty old men. Probably not our target market. Those are my Instagram followers, you idiot. Look at all the orders rolling in for Ask Jax. I never thought I'd say this, but Teresa, you're brilliant. I don't want to rain on your parade. But how are you going to fill 510, 12, 50 orders? Ma, you just don't have any vision. Oh, my vision's fine. I see a bunch of kids who think they're going to make a mint off rubber underpants. But, Mom, pre-sales like this mean startup capital and... Save it for the shareholders, Mr. Google. <laughs> Teresa, as your IT manager, I recommend myself for VP of Sales and Marketing. Hmm. I'd have to see a resume. Resume but I stand on my experience. Remember those great ideas I had for Pop's business? What, like the public transit getaway? What do you mean, exact change? Will you just go? I propose we make a web commercial. Keep this synergy going. I have no idea what synergy means, and that impresses me. You're hired. <laughs> All right, this'll be a cinch. We sweet talk his secretary, get in his office, and grab the envelope. <laughs> Say no more, Jimmy. They don't call me old sugar lips for nothing. Hey, pal, is Premier O'Shea's secretary around? If you mean administrative assistant, that's me. A man's secretary! Aboard! Aboard! <sighs> What's wrong with you? Guys can have lady jobs. It's the 20th century. I got spooked. But this is good. Now that it's a guy, we just rough him up and barge in. In a government building? Are you nuts? We gotta go back to that drawing board. Sounds good. Now I can finish that picture of a duck. Where's my crayons? Our first commercial. I'm so excited. How can you be in a commercial? We're in witness protection. Mom, it's all right. We thought of that. Watch. Hey, girlfriend. Do boys ignore you because you have a small bony ass? Then you need Ass Jacks. With Ass Jacks, you get so many guys, you'll have to beat them off with a stick. In fact, you'll be beating guys off all over town. You can wear Ass Jacks in the club. Shake that thing. Up on charges, wear Ass Jacks to court. Ass dismissed. You can even wear them to church. Bless me, Father, for I have booty. Don't be a jackass. Go to AskJacks.com and order your Ask Jacks now. Now what are you gonna do? You actually gotta make the damn things. Ma, we're already on it. Wow, how'd you do this? Simple, I had a vision and told Petey to make it happen. At first, we considered outsourcing to a Chinese production facility. But then Petey reminded me that they have a terrible Hunan rice recipe. Human rights policy. Whatever. Anyway, as a job creator, 
I wanted to keep the factory here in the state of Regina. But I crunched the numbers and the labor costs would kill us, so we automated. I gotta say, I'm impressed. This is a hell of an operation you got here. Now if you'll excuse us, we gotta move some latex butts. <laughs> move it or lose it, toots! Hello! I'm the Minister of Fish, Wildlife, and uh, Nuclear War. We need to get into the Premier's office. Oh, yes, sir. I'll open it right up. Wait a second. How can you be the Minister of Fish, Wildlife, and Nuclear War when he's standing right over there? Hello! I told you we should have used Mr. Brown. I got a slide. Talk to you. <gasps> Straight from the breeder. Uh, oh, what a sweetie! I'm gonna call you Minxie. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Where the hell did all this crap come from, Teresa? Who's paying for this? I am. I've been pre-approved for like a zillion credit cards. This is just like with your boyfriends. Have fun now, pay later. Oh, you're just bitter because you never did anything with your life. Excuse me? Never did anything with my life? I raised three kids. Ooh, three whole kids. Talk to me when you raise an empire, Ma. Security! Gina, get your hands off me. Take it easy. You don't want to slip and fall. Repeatedly. Onto my boat. So you're a goon for your sister now. She signs the checks. I got it! What the hell is that? You're supposed to get an envelope. Ah, oh, crap. Wrong building. I'll go put it back. Where's my stuff? I returned it all. My handbag collection? Returned. My diamond tennis bracelet? Returned. The meat dress I bought off Lady Gaga? Cooked it for dinner. Really? You just made a $20,000 meat sauce. This isn't fair. Why are you doing this to me? I'm trying to teach you about personal responsibility. The ex-stripper mobster's wife is going to tell me, the CEO of Ass Jacks, about responsibility? Do not talk to me like that, young lady. My house, my rules. Well, then, maybe I won't live in your house, you jealous cow. Where are you going? I'm taking my operation overseas. And by overseas, I mean downtown. Go ahead and move out. You're never gonna make it. This town's gonna eat you alive. And your little dog, too. You're gonna come crawling back. You'll see. <laughs> My baby! <laughs> this meat sauce tastes like sweat. Ma? How'd you find me? Ah, oh, right. This is the living room, and this is a room for the Siamese. Your cats have their own room? What cats? The one on the right doesn't actually work here. Popo! Tea, special blend. What's with the munchkin? That's Popo, my Burmese manservant. He does what you do, only more and better. Teresa, I'm trying to mend fences here. I'm in a condo. There is no fence. What's in there? The Ass Jack's nerve center. Eat it, Koji-san. We're the ones with leverage. Don't make me Fukushima your face. Mom, we're busy in here. <sighs> oh, this tea's tasty. It's a blend of jasmine, oolong, and great white shark semen. Teresa, I know you're mad at me, but I miss you. I want you to come home. I'll even take off the ankle cuff. Does this mean no more breathing down my neck and getting on my back about boys? We'll work it out. I'll try not to get on your case so much, but there's got to be some give and take. Oh, it is kind of lonely here at the top. I'll think about it. Hold on, I got to take this. It's my attorney's. Oh, oh God, I hope she comes to her senses. <laughs> Minxie? 
Banksy, wake up. Yo, make so. Up and at him. Come on. Oh, great. You killed the freaking dog. Now Teresa will never come home. Hmm. Nah. Sorry, Minxie. Nothing personal. Ah! Oh my God! Ma, what is wrong with you? You're trying to kill my dog, you psycho! No, no, no! He's already dead! I'm just getting rid of the... I was right! You are a jealous cow! But to take it out on poor Minxie? <gasps> you know, my lawyers told me to get legally emaciated. I wasn't gonna do it, but now I am! You're thin enough, young lady! No, wait! Emancipated. It means I'm being freed from you, like the slaves were in the 60s. You're divorcing me? That's it! Petey, Gina, let's go. Hey, hey, they're still on the clock. Get in the car, now! This is kidnapping. They're my kids. I'll nap them all I want. <laughs> Who got the leverage now, Petey-san? <laughs> Here, let me get the rope. How do you do that? Do what? I got it! I can't wait to see them pictures. <laughs> you can't wait to see naked pictures of McCool? What? I like photography. Now we're talking. It ain't a real heist unless you're spilling blood. Crap, it's O'Shea! Oh, me darling, let me show you the end of me rainbow. Uh -huh. You think they're doing it? Hey, Petey. Are you wearing ass jacks right now? No. Good. Then it's safe to sit down. Check the link I sent you. <laughs> the ass jacks are fine. Until you try to sit down. <laughs> O-M-G! <laughs> There's so many lawsuits, I stopped counting. It's over, Teresa. What about my money? If I were you, I'd put on a ball cap and sunglasses and get the hell out of that building quick. Oh, Popo. At least I'll always have you. Actually, my name is Edward and my paycheck bounced. So I ate your dog. Ah, there, I'm done. <laughs> All right, me darling. Back to Vegas with you. Uh, good morning, Premier O'Shea. Uh, a few days ago, I inadvertently sent you some personal mail. I've come to apologize and... Beg your forgiveness. Grab it off the desk, boy -o. I'm hitting the showers. Can't run the government covered in body glitter, smelling like a Reno cat house. Stomp and Tom Connors, what are you two doing in here? We was saving you a job. You owe us one. Boy, listening to a guy hump all night sure makes you hungry. Want to get some sausage? It's not even raining. You were right, Ma. I'm crawling back, broke, homeless, and unemployed. Go ahead, say I told you so. Nah, I think you learned a bigger lesson than I ever could have taught you. I sure did. I learned if I'm gonna take a pregnancy test, I should do it at the mall bathroom. That's what you got from this? Nothing about being responsible or thinking before you do stuff. Uh, nope. Ah, oh, forget it. I'm just glad you're back. Oh, boy. Ah! <sighs> it's good to be home. La 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 la
Lee. It's about freaking time I get to tell my story. In case you're deaf, blind, or not into smoking hot chicks, I'm Teresa Falcone. When I was younger, I used to love Bring Your Daughter to Work Day. The guys at Dad's work were so much fun. There was Frankie No Fingers, such a klutz. But boy, could he <laughs> thumb wrestle. And Johnny Calculator used to help me with my counting homework. See, Teresa? X minus Y equals Z. I'm supposed to be doing math, not spelling. And Freddy Chuckles was always good for a laugh. Hey, hey Teresa, smell my flower. <laughs> I'm all wet. Teresa, get in the car. I never saw those guys again. Now that we're living in Regina, I really miss the guys from Pop's work. Whatever happened to them? Nothing. They just got froze out of the business. <laughs> what was that, Daddy? Nothing. Forget about it. But you just said... Yeah, I said forget about it! Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy and a couple with a Gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he'd take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite. Wasn't much along till the mob all wants him dead. So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds. The feds would say they helped if they could use him as a pawn. So he ratted out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. Anything yet? A little more. All right, that's perfect. Gangster TV, all gangsters, all the time. Good job, kid. Now get down oh, here. Oh. But be careful, it's slippery. What's all the racket? Yeah, I can barely hear myself think. What was I thinking about? Oh yeah, boobs. Everybody, get in here. I'm gonna be on TV. You're gonna be on TV? It's like I'm living with John Stamos over here. I never been on TV before, unless they were calling me a possible suspect. Ooh, alleged perpetrator. <laughs> it made me so proud. Jimmy, you think they'll get Bobby De Niro to play you? Or someone sexy like that froggy face guy from Aerosmith. He's a guy? I've been whacking off to him for years. No, it's a documentary. I'll be playing myself. Next on Gangster TV, Jimmy Falcone. Diary of a Dirty Snitch. What? Jimmy Falcone was a capo in the Gambini crime family until this self-serving scumbag killed his boss and sold out his mob cronies. Sold out? The feds never paid me a red cent! Every gutter king needs his queen, so Jimmy married former stripper Cookie DeFazio. This good time floozy latched onto Jimmy like a pit bull on a trailer park toddler. How the hell they get a video of me stripping? So that's where that tape wound up. But Jimmy had a fatal flaw, who went by the name of Cheech, an idiot man-child whose bumbling almost got them all killed. Can't argue there. I can't watch anymore. They made us look like scumbags. Hey, it wasn't so bad. They got our names right. Ah, who am I kidding? It was a smear job. We weren't scumbags, were we, Jimmy? Remember the classy people who used to come by the house? Joey Dirtbag, Larry the Pimp, Holly the Pornographer, back home. We was like royalty. Oh, you'll always be royalty to me, Cook. Now, come on, let's go fish the dead rats out of the septic tank. Ah! <laughs> That's for calling me a man-child. Jimmy, I want a juice box. Big news from Student Council President Petey. Wayne Gretzky High has sponsored an endangered polar bear. After global warming tragically melted his ice flow, Blumpkin was forced to swim for five months. No home, no food, no hope for the future. Quit it! I'm trying to make a speech here. But no longer, because our money will help Blumpkin find a new flow. Petey, did you slash the prom committee budget to pay for this poodle bear? Not yet, I haven't. Well, you better not. We have a big wish list this year. Glad to see we're being reasonable. Petey McDougal, sign here. Ooh, I love big packages. And that's why you're going to prom alone. <laughs> Holy crap, Petey, you didn't sponsor it. You bought it. Ew. <coughs> that teddy bear 
grass stinks. That's not the bear. Attention, everyone. I have a very important announcement, so I need everyone's undivided attention. Please listen carefully to every word I say. Regina Who do those gangster TV governors think they are? I'd like to go over there and teach them a lesson they won't forget. That two-bit hack job you showed about my family made my wife cry. Now, say hello to my little friend! <laughs> They'll never see that one coming. Uh, Jimmy, did you get all that? What? Oh, sure. Sure, every last bit. So you're clear we'll be hosting a VIP? Yep, VIP, most valuable player, got it. <laughs> Jimmy, you kidder, it's very important person. For security reasons, we will only refer to the VIP by their secret code name, Spotted Dick. I need you to get in touch with Spotted Dick's people and tell them where the dinner is, okay? Say, is this VIP important enough that if they was to come to dinner, my wife would be impressed? Oh, she'd be more than impressed, Jimmy. Enough said. How you doing? Jimmy McDougal from Regina Tourism. Tell Spotty Dick the dinner's at 123 Jim Carrey Lane. And tell the VIP it's BYOB. Look, guess what? Flowers? What are you bringing me flowers for? Who'd you sleep with? I'll kill her. Then I'll kill you. Then I'll mount both your heads on stakes to teach the kids what we do with cheetahs. Sorry, Jimmy, I'm still upset about that stupid movie. Well, I got just the thing. We're having a VIP over for dinner, just like the good old days. Aw, Jimmy! What's the matter with you? You invite someone for dinner, you don't tell me? Who the hell is this VIP anyway? Yes, sir, I'm here. Jimmy, regarding the dinner for Spotted Dick. Oh, so McCool knows about it. Why am I the last one to know anything around here? Why are you getting so mad? What's the big deal? Just a second, hon, okay? The big deal is, I haven't cleaned, there ain't a thing in the fridge, and look at me, my hair's a disaster. Don't worry, we'll order in. And your hair, I don't know what to tell you. What the hell's that supposed to mean? You saying I got bad hair? Jimmy, cookie, shush. Stay out of this, McCool. Cook, I didn't say you got bad hair, I just said you don't got no time to do nothing about it. Oh, so now I'm fat and lazy. You believe this, Jagoff? Oh, Cook, relax. Why you gotta get so personal? None of us is 22 anymore. Oh, so now I'm old. Let me tell you something, you fat sack of shit. I beg your pardon. What? Is this 123 Jim Carrey Lane? Your Majesty, if I may. Your Majesty? Holy sh! The VIP is the Queen of freaking England. Your Majesty, my apologies. You were given the wrong address. Now, if you'll just follow me... Nonsense, officer. I'm in the right place. And I'd rather like to see how this turns out. Thanks for getting the old broad here in one piece. Let me give you the royal tour. This is the grand foyer. That's the blue drawing room. And the throne's just down the hall if you need it. Be a pal and light a match when you're done. Who? Ain't that the broad on the 20? You are correct. It is we. You want to sign this for me? Andy's. Oh, cool. What the hell are you still doing here? What am I doing here? The question of the day, nay, the question of the century is, what is the queen doing here? Hey, don't look at me. With a code name like Spotted Dick, it could have been anyone in Hollywood. Jimmy, do you have any idea of the vast importance of this dinner? Canada's place in the Commonwealth of Nations rests on tonight. Speak American. Jimmy do bad. All right, now we're communicating. Jimmy do bad how? The Commonwealth is a collection of countries loyal to Her Majesty the Queen. You mean that old broad owns a whole collection of countries? I don't. You think she'd dress better? Yes, you would. But recent austerity measures have forced her to cut one nation from the Commonwealth. Word is, it's either going to be Canada or Tonga. Tonga? Is that where they make the trucks? No, it's a country in the South Pacific. The odds are against us, and you're making them worse. They have coconuts, Jimmy. Coconuts! You're telling me the Falcons aren't good enough for some stuffy queen? <laughs> That's exactly what I'm telling you. At the very least, try to be classy. Hey, no problemo. We got classy coming out the freaking wazoo here. <sighs> I can't believe the fate of Canada rests on what comes out of your wazoo. Well, Blumpkin, I think you're a hit. The kids all love you. 
Except maybe for Stumpy, who should have known better than to get so close to your cage. You're feeding him baby seals? What? They were out of baby dolphins. Aren't those expensive? What about prom? Who cares about prom? Pumpkin's on the endangered list. Horny teenagers are not. You're gonna be endangered if you spend all the prom money. There's only one way to settle this. President Petey will put it to a vote. <laughs> Don't worry, Blumpkin. The students will do the right thing. After all, who couldn't love that face? Ew. Not that face. The other one. A drink fit for royalty. Mmm. What's in it? Crown Royal and Royal Cola. It's got a kick like a fucking mule. Ew, my. Perhaps we should cut cocktail hour short and go straight to dinner? We will. As soon as the pizza gets here. Splendid. We'll just wait for the pizza. <laughs> Yo, Queen, scooch down. Make room for the uninvited guest. Thank you, officer. Ma'am? Gina, we got company. Maybe our guest would like to wear the pepperoni king crown. What, are you kidding, Pop? She's a queen. She got plenty of crowns, don't you? You heard your father, young lady. Fine, here. Throw it on the pile. No, no, no. One always waits for the queen to dine first. Sure, sure. There's grab a slice. It looks delicious, but I rarely eat at these events. All right, then. More for me. Watch your f***ing manners in front of the queen. <gasps> so, your harness. You and James Bond, you still keep in touch? And, uh... How do I get me one of them licenses to kill? <laughs> There's no such thing as a license to kill. Or so they'd have you think. Jesus, Petey, you smell like a slaughterhouse. I never thought I'd say this, but I had a long day bludgeoning seals. Who is this person? This is my boy, Petey. Petey, this here's the queen. Barbaric rituals, such as bludgeoning innocent seals, cast a dim light on Canada's future in the Commonwealth. Oh, I'm sure it seems cruel to an entitled monarch like yourself, but I got a polar bear to feed your irrelevance. Jimmy? A word? No? <laughs> this evening is a total disaster. You're serving pizza, Petey just insulted the queen, and you're not even wearing shoes. How can I put this so you'll understand? Say this was the Godfather. Which part? Because if you mean three, I don't want to talk about it. Jimmy, focus. Think of the Queen as Vito Corleone and your Fredo. Holy crap! So she's like a Don? Jimmy, for Canada, she's the Don of all Dons. Whoa, you think someone would have mentioned she's a very important person? Don Liz. I've just been informed of your importance to the organization, and I want to offer my most humble apologies. You may rise. Look, we've been acting like a bunch of morons. Why don't we start over, and I'll show you how we entertain a person of your statue. Break out the grappa! Jimmy, I don't think this is a good idea. These good people have opened their home to me, and I would like to enjoy their hospitality. Your Majesty. Enough of your blathering and hectoring. Away with you! You heard the broad. Away with you. Yes, ma'am. Hello, Tonga police? Are you accepting resumes? Majesty, will Prince Harry be joining us? I don't know, my dear. Let me call him. Really? Certainly not! <laughs> Got you! <laughs> <laughs> oh, my! Let me get this straight. Your family's been in power for like a hundred years. How'd you pull that off? Sometimes one must rule with an iron fist. Spoken like a true tyrant. Spoken like a true nobody. Iron fist. No fingerprints. You sure you ain't from Brooklyn? <laughs> <laughs> what the hell happened last night? I can't feel my tongue. I can't hear you on account of all this pounding. I got this nagging feeling something bad happened. I gotta tell you, Pop, far as I'm concerned, the Queen's our kind of people. Oh, crap! The Queen! <laughs> Remember when Cheech and her did the Lombada? Who knew she could go so low? <laughs> <laughs> Remember when she knighted us? The ceremony was a lot like getting made. 
only more blood. <laughs> Remember when she called up Buckingham Palace and told them to go screw themselves that she was evacuating? Except she didn't say evacuating. She said some other word. She said abdicating. It means she quits. Don't you people fucking read? What's that, Gina? Talk in my good ear. Uh, your hydrant. Did you quit being a queen last night? Indeed I did. Last night's revelries finally opened my eyes. I wish to live out the rest of my days as a... What do you call it again? A regular schnook? Precisely. Nice going, Fredo. Hey, McCool. Hey? Hey! The Queen of England is abdicating her throne and all you can say is, hey! What? We had a few too many last night. No! Oh, good for you! And now we're on the verge of an international crisis! She's the Queen! She can't just leave the royal family! Not until she dies! Whoa! She really is like a Don! If word gets out that she's here, this house will be swarmed with news cameras! I need you to take care of her until we can figure something out! Got it. I'll take care of her. No, Jimmy! Just... Keep her in the house. Keep her happy, and above all, keep her out of sight. Understood? What's that for? Looking after the Don ain't cheap. Keep it coming. <laughs> Why did I look? Why did I look? Ew! You have a gentle touch, James. My pleasure, you highball. Why did I look? Why did I look? I'm royal taster. I gotta tell you, this ain't good. Good heavens! James! James! Oh, so now Sir Jimmy's too good for my cooking. Jimmy, what's this? You robbed the jewelry store? Without me? Nah, the old broad's got me polishing the jewels. What? Like you ain't thinking about it right now? Cut it out. Ah, you're no fun. Really, Cheech? Really? No hablo English. Get out of here. Come on, she ain't gonna miss one little necklace. Yes, she will. Now scram. Just let me try on one, Jimmy. No! I'm responsible for these. Anything goes missing, the Queen said she'd lock me in a tower. Now you're not even trying, Cheech. Who is this Cheech of what you speak? All right, everybody out! No one comes in this room! Hmm. Mm -mm. <laughs> Just giving it the old spit shine. It's time to vote. All in favor of saving this most majestic and endangered creature, raise their hands. All in favor of saving prom? Yeah. This is bad. What do I do? What do I do? Sometimes one must rule with an iron fist. Iron fist. Iron fist. Iron fist. You elected me to lead, and lead I shall. Screw the prom. <gasps> I'm canceling it for your own good. Get him. Get out of here. Where'd you get pitchforks and torches? <laughs> Violent revolution is very un-Canadian, people! <laughs> All right, boys, do your business. I can't believe this. I went my whole life without having to clean up after a dog. <sighs> yeah, look at a bright side. At least it's a small dog. Yeah, keep smiling. If you wasn't so connected, I'd put a f***ing bullet in you. That's it, Liz! I can't do this no more! Whatever are you talking about, James? Look, I know you think living like a schnook is all good times, but you gotta get back to your old life before someone, and I'm not naming any dogs, gets hurt. But for the first time in years, I feel like I can breathe. No schedules, no international crises, no buck-toothed politicians looking for a pat on the back from a substitute mother figure. Come on, Liz, you're the queen of frickin' England. You can snap your fingers and get room to breathe. My subjects expect so much of me, James. Yeah, well, sometimes you gotta make sacrifices for the good of great. Greater good. Yeah, that's the one. Look at me. I gave up my whole life for the sake of my family. No, you didn't. You ran like a scared little snitch to save your red ass. Go to your room! I'm already going, snitch. All I'm saying is, Sometimes, you gotta give the people what they want, even if it means giving up what you want. All right, all right, I'll give them their goddamn prom! Get off my freaking back! 
James, your son appears to be angry and bleeding. Ah, teenagers, what are you going to do? In any case, thanks to your rousing speech, I have decided to return to my royal duties. Yes! Hello, Tonga police? I'd like to cancel my interview tomorrow. Oh, now you tell me the precinct has an ocean view. Going with prom was the right thing to do. The optic theme's a nice touch. It was inspired by Blumpkin. Besides, Hawaiian luau is so overdone. So what's gonna happen to Blumpkin after tonight? He's going to live out his days at the Winnipeg Zoo in an 8x10 cage with all the antidepressants he can handle. But I thought you cared about him. You wanted a prom, you got a prom! Leave it at that! In the meantime, he really adds to the atmosphere, don't you think? Up for a movie? Popcorn's on me! I recently spent some time with a delightful Canadian family, the McDougals. Their grace, gentility, and dare I say class, reaffirms my commitment to keeping Canada firmly in the Commonwealth. Ha <laughs> Suck on those coconuts, Tonga! Did you hear that, Jimmy? She said we was classy. Yeah, but she said the McDougals, not the Falcons. Don't worry. The McDougals saved Canada. What did the freaking Falcons do for us lately? Well, they did get gangster TV booted off the air due to low ratings. There's still one tiny problem. After the press conference, the Queen failed to show up at her hotel. Any idea where she could be? Jimmy said you needed some breathing room. How do you like them apples? Breathtaking. That would be my ride. Thank you, Francesco. And farewell. Give me a call, will you? Yo, Miss, you're gonna call me a what? Never mind. Oh well, we'll always have Regina. How you doing? I'm Gina Falcone. You can put a gun to my head, but I ain't calling myself McDougal. My pop used to be the capo in a New York crime family. That was great. Everywhere I went, I was treated with respect. Hey, Gina, good to see you, kid. Here's a hundred. Get yourself a lollipop. I talked with that dentist of yours. You won't be getting any more cavities. That was all about the end, because anyway, my uncle Cheech started shooting his mouth off. The Don ordered a hit on him, but my pop didn't have the stones to do it. So while pop was begging the Don to spare Cheech's life, I decided to make my bones and take Cheech out. And then pop had to go and screw it up. I guess pop did have stones, just not a lot of brains. And that's how we wound up in Lady Part Saskatchewan. It's okay to say it, sweetie. Regina. But if you think I like being here, you can fucking. Oh, language! What the fuck's wrong with you? Forget about it! Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy and the capo with the gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he'd take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite. Wasn't much along till the mob all went in dead. So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds. The feds would say they helped if they could use him as a pawn. So he ratted out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. Oh, forget about it. Are your fingers tired at the end of a long day? They are. Are you still dialing the phone by hand? Oh, I am. Do you sometimes not point because you just can't be bothered? That's me. I hate pointing. With Superfinger, you'll never have to lift a finger again. Oh, that's handy. Oh, fingery. <laughs> but wait, there's more. It also scratches, pokes, taps, and picks. It's super. Now 1-800-FINGER-ME-NOW. Welcome to Superfinger. Enter your credit card number now. Wait a minute. We don't have a credit card. Enter your credit card number now. I said I don't have a credit card. Do you take cash? Sure. Really? No. I'll give you a Superfinger. Jimmy, do you know what I do all day when you're at work? That's between you and Dr. Roz. I drive around town paying our bills in cash. I'm tired of living like this, and I'm sick of lugging this around. Don't you think it's time we got a credit card? What are you talking about? You got lots of those. None with my real name on them. 
Besides, McCool took him away. Like it's a crime to use someone else's credit card. Ah, you don't want one of them. What if someone steals it? Buys an Asian bride off the internet. You bad man! You promised better life! Jimmy, I want to live beyond our means, like normal people. All right, Cook. If you want a credit card so bad, I'll get you one. How the hell do you get a credit card? That's easy. You steal a lady's purse, you take her card. Bada boom, bada bing. I mean legitimately. I got nothing. Oh, for Christ's sake, you open a bank account. Fine, I'll dig up the nest egg and put it in a bank. You don't gotta yell. Cheech, get me a shovel. No problem. Ming, jam what cha. Get your own damn shovel. <laughs> In layman's terms, the annual percentage... Jeez, I never been in a bank for more than three and a half minutes. Boy, I miss those days. So, what do you think, sir? I think I could take this place in about two and a half. I meant in terms of interest. Hey, I'm here, ain't I? So did you want the low risk interest rate of 0.1% or did you want to lock it in at six? So I can have 0.1 or 6%. That's right. I'll take the six and you better have it by Friday. Sorry, old habits. Your deposit slip? My life savings for a piece of paper and they call me a gangster. Holy shit, I'm rich! Cookie! I got you a little something. Yes! A credit card! My favorite piece of plastic that doesn't vibrate. Listen up, everyone. I learned a valuable lesson at the bank today. We're richer than we think. What are you talking about? It's easy. You had the nest egg I dug up from the yard with the money I stashed under the furnace minus the cash I sent to that Nigerian prince, and it equals... We're rich! Jimmy, you gotta try this caviar and truffle sandwich. It's 600 bucks every time I take a bite, and it tastes just like chicken. Nah, I'm too full from the narwhal soup. We didn't spend too much yesterday, did we? Not at all. We bought mostly essentials. Ain't that right, Percy? What the hell? My credit card's declined. Last time someone declined me, I put their head in a vice. Run it again. Same thing. What's the problem? What's the problem? I'll tell you the problem. I got some moron up my ass asking what the freaking problem is. I don't believe this. Jimmy, give me some cash. Any chance we could run a tab? A super finger. Oh, I so want one of those. Mr. McDougal, your money is locked in for a period of no less than six months due to the high interest rate. I explain this all to you in great detail. Isn't there anything you can do? How about a loan? You know we're good for it. I'm sorry, Mrs. McDougal, but our records indicate that you recently went on an insane spending spree and are now at significant credit risk. Jimmy, what are we gonna do? What did he say, Cook? Holy crap! We're broke? So now that all my money's locked up, I need you to float me for the next six months. I'm sorry, Jimmy, but it's against witness protection rules. After we set you up with your first job, your financial well-being is your own concern. I would love to offer you a personal loan. That's great! But I'm afraid I'm on a strict budget. Not only do I support Horse, myself, and a village of Bushman orphans, but every remaining dollar goes to my poor aging mother and her insanely expensive Bengay addiction. So you can't do nothing for me? Au contraire, my friend. I can give you something even better than money. More money? No. A money tree? 
No. A money factory? No. What the hell is better than money? If you see happiness or religion, I'm out of here. A vigorous pep talk. <laughs> At times like this, a man has to reach deep down inside himself to find out what makes him a man. To find wherein lies the root of his true character. Let me read you a letter from one of my orphans. <clears throat> Jimmy? Horse? Back to the zoo with you, mister. All right, everyone, listen up. It looks like we're having a small cash flow problem. If someone ain't paying up, I say go for the knees. Nah, Gina. Your mother thinks we gotta live economical for a while. So we're gonna have to cut back on a few things. Teresa, that means no new clothes. You mean no new clothes today, right? Gina, no betting on long shots. But old glue factory in the fourth is looking real good. And Cheech, no more booze for a while. Well, I had a good run. Someone spot me a bullet, I'll pay you back. This is great. Now we can implement all the green initiatives I've been suggesting. It'll force us to reduce our carbon footprint. We have to buy smaller shoes now, too? Screw this. I know how to make money. Teresa, you will not have sex for money. Mom! This is so unfair. Now you kids listen to your mother. I gotta run. I'm teeing off in an hour. Jimmy, you march right down to that tourism bureau and get your job back. And you can forget about golf. No more golf! Cheech, I'm calling sloppy seconds on that bullet. We have to ride the bus. We're turning into those people who bring bags to the store because they can't afford plastic. Mass transit is good for the environment and reduces CO2 emissions. This is so unfair. How could Daddy expect us to live on zero dollars a day? That's almost nothing. What's the matter with you two? You've been living off a of pop like forever. Me? I've been earning for myself since preschool. You want something in this life? You take it. Simple as that. She's right. Not about the stealing, of course, but there are things we can do to make our own money. Like collecting bottles for recycling. Really? Tell me more. Well, recycling saves resources, reduces smog... T -t 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 the money part. They pay for bottles, so we can earn money and save the planet at the same time. Driver, take me to where we save the planet! Sure, it's one stop past where we end world hunger. Stupid kid. Morning! Um, Jimmy, I, I don't think you... Sorry, can't talk. A lot of work to do. Gotta put the old nose in the grindstone, so... Oh, I'm sorry, Jimmy, but didn't you quit? What? Quit? What, are you kidding? I love this job. I love whatever it is we, uh, do here. I'm sorry, but you were very clear that you wanted to terminate your employment. Toby, that's not my ass. My ass is in color. Jimmy... As much as I'd like to give you your job back, we've already hired someone else. <laughs> so fire him! No can do. Last time I did that, his union was all over me. So, did Toby give you your job back? Yeah, Cheech. My first day back and he gave me the day off. Well, looks like I gotta find some other job. Good thing you got the day off. You don't know what it's like out there, Jimmy. It's doggy dog. -dog. People killing each other to climb the corporate ladder. You look the wrong way, somebody stabs you in the back. Hey, wait a minute. You know exactly what it's like out there. Yeah, I do. Who knows? Maybe I'll get one of them CEO jobs where I can screw up and ask for a bailout. I'm gonna get a job too. Atta boy, Cheech. You think I got a good voice for phone sex? Yo, Ma, are we... Poor? No, Gina, we're not poor. We're just a little light right now. That's an actual thing? I thought it was something Deadbeat said when they don't want to pay. No, it's an actual thing. So, if you're not poor, why are you buying all this generic crap? Grumpy green giant, hamburger hindrance, room temperature pockets? Who buys this stuff? Immigrants and hobos, honey. Don't forget the elderly. No one's talking to you, toots. <laughs> Teresa, just because it's called dumpster diving doesn't mean you actually have to dive. I know. You do. <laughs> How much did we make? Can you believe this?
this is the only job we could get? I got 20 years experience running a family business, but no frickin' references. You know who'd have been a good reference? Don Gambini. He thought the world of you. Till you whacked him. Welcome to Blue Ball Ranch, boys. What we do here is extract bull semen for export. And how exactly do we do that? Same way you do at home. You mean in front of the window, with the neighbors watching? <laughs> oh! Ah, God, my arm is tired. Your arm? Thirty-two bucks, that's it? A broad who does the same job gets at least 80 bucks an hour. A hundred if she does it like Cheech. I still don't understand what your job is, Jimmy. I don't bring my work home, unless it gets on my shirt. Well, you gotta find something else. We're barely scraping by. We can't pay our bills, and now Cheech is eating dog food. It makes my coat shiny. Cook, this is temporary. We'll get through it. Have I ever let you down? Not until now you haven't. What's this? A pawn shop ticket. I hawked my engagement ring to buy groceries. You did what? Well, someone has to provide for this family, and right now that someone ain't you. I can't believe you sold it without talking to me. I was hungry. I couldn't think straight. I know things are bad, but look on the bright side. They can't possibly get worse. And they just got worse. Jesus, Jimmy, I'm blind. This is what we get for messing with them bulls. Are you kidding me? What? I saw candles. I thought romance was in the air. Along with a hint of lavender. That's Cheech, burning furniture to stay warm. And you can forget fooling around. The mortgage company's breathing down our necks. If we don't pay on time, we lose the house. Ten minutes of sweaty groping ain't gonna help. Can't hurt. What, so now you won't sleep with me because I got no money? I won't sleep with you because I got no ring. It'd be a sin. What about our vows? For richer and for poorer. I'm an Italian girl from Brooklyn. I cross my fingers during the poorer part. What about during the obey part? Yeah, I'm sleeping on the couch, ain't I? Hey, where'd you get all that money? Do I ask you about your business? Listen, kid. You think you could loan me a few bucks? I might be able to help you out. You're a lifesaver. At 18%? What? That's crazy! That's highway robbery! That's... That's my girl. If you don't mind my saying, Pop, you're stooping pretty low borrowing money off a kid. Tell me about it, but I don't know what else to do. You can act like a man! Well, I don't know what else to do. Get out there, pull some jobs. There's banks, liquor stores, convenience stores, credit unions, and that's just robberies. You could be out there running numbers, pimping broad, selling protection, but instead you're sitting around like a schmuck. I don't even know you anymore. Jeez, maybe she's right. I got it. Ow! Oh, Jesus! Die! Jimmy, I've been concerned about your descent into abject poverty. How are things? To be honest, which is hard for me around cops. Not too good. You're not considering a return to a life of crime, are you? To be dishonest, which is way more up my alley, no, not at all. Take solace, Jimmy. Sweet Mother Canada stands at the bottom of the abyss, waiting to cradle you in the silky embrace of her social safety net. Say again, in American? Tomorrow, I want you to march down to the Service Canada office and apply for employment insurance. What the hell is that? It's just like unemployment insurance, except they put a positive spin on the name so the indigent don't feel like enormous blood-sucking leeches. Which, of course, they are not. Who sucked what? Trust me, Jimmy, your adopted nation has your back. For Canada, where you can get money for nothing, but the chicks aren't free! <laughs> That didn't work. Next. Go on, Petey. I'm not sure about this. I love experiments. I just don't want to be experimented on. If you don't, Petey, they'll do it on an innocent little animal. Okay, okay, I'll do it. Great. How'd it go? I feel surprisingly fine. At first I was scared, but after the probe, everything went dark That's and- That's great. Where do we get paid? 
Will there be any side effects from this? Absolutely not. <laughs> I'm sorry, sir. It says here you quit your full-time job, which means you're ineligible for employment insurance. Who, me? I didn't quit. I quit. So you're telling me I don't even qualify for a handout? Next in line. Yeah, but... Next! All right. My wife don't respect me, my daughter thinks I'm a schmuck, and I'm gonna lose my house. Time to go back to work. And by work, I mean crime. Crime? Why didn't you think of that before? The answer was right in front of you. Sometimes I wonder about you, Jimmy. You know, I'm starting to think you care more about money than you do about saving the Earth. That's ridiculous. I totally care about the Earth. I also care about the Russian businessman who lives on the Earth and happens to need your kidney. My what? <gasps> Are you guys going to take long? Of course not. Now we must take organs while fresh. Hey, sleepyhead. So, 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 so cold. Yeah, about that. I had a slight miscommunication with these guys. I thought they were just taking a kidney, but they wanted everything. Heart, lungs, even your doodad. Which the one guy wanted for a necklace. What? But I couldn't let them do it. Oh, thank God. Petey, I may have been using your dumb infatuation with the Earth to get important things like money, and I'm sorry. I know, it's okay. In the end, you stuck up for your little brother, which warms my frozen heart. Your heart could have got me 10 grand, but I'm glad it's still inside you. Ah! You're freezing, you little freak! You're trying to kill me! Man, I've been keeping a lid on my criminal side so long, I feel rusty. Ah, that's better. I could rob that jewelry store or snatch that lady's purse. Hell, I could do both. Rob that jewelry store and then carry the jewels home in the purse. Good thinking, Jimmy boy. Nah, if I'm gonna do this, gotta be something big. Bingo. Oh man, what the hell am I doing? What are you waiting for? Some idiot left the keys in a truck full of money. Don't do it, Jimmy. If you get caught, that will mean the end of your witness protection. I ain't getting caught. But if you do, I can no longer protect you. Like you need this Gavon to protect you. Jimmy, you would be endangering the lives of your family. McCool's right, Jimmy. Yeah, Pop, don't do it. It is a lot of money, though. Teresa! I'm just saying. What? You guys took all the good costumes. All right, I made up my mind. I'm pretty sure I can risk it. Jimmy, no. But I won't risk it for my family. I already put them through this once. I ain't gonna do it again. Hurry! For Canada! <laughs> Hurry up and steal the truck. I need booze money. I just hallucinated little people crawling all over you. Hey! Some idiot left the keys in this truck. Well, Jimmy, I guess it's back to jerking bulls. Remember the old days when we were short on cash? We'd just throw a junior good fella under a bus and fleece the transit company for the insurance. Oh, yeah. The good old days. <laughs> Can I wash these down with a little scotch? Nope. Doctor's orders. I'm sorry for everything I put you through, Cook. I got you a little something. <gasps> oh, Jimmy! I love you! Jesus Christ! Give me a bottle, I'm hallucinating again! Saskatchewan, la 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 Which one's the button again? Ah, there it is. Hey, how you doing? I'm Chief Falcone. Well, McDougal. I got the alias in witness protection because of my nephew Jimmy. I don't like it, but I had no choice. So there's a contract out on me. Big deal. 
I mean, maybe I spilled a few secrets to anyone who'd listen, but there's a lot of other secrets I'd never tell a soul. Like the fact that we faked the moon landing. We were the ones that shot Dick Cheney's friend in the face. And we took the weapons of mass distraction out of Iraq. Someone got the memo wrong, but still, us. So, anyway, my nephew's gonna straighten things out with Don Gambini, whose first name, oddly enough, is Don. So, if he wanted, he could call himself Don Don, which I would do. I mean, how cool would that be? Cheech don't mean no harm. He's just a little light in a cranial region. I got nothing to worry about. Jimmy will get me off the hook. Maron! Don Don's a pancake. Then the mob tried to kill us. Jimmy ratted everyone out to the feds, and we wound up in Regina. Vagina? No, wait, you were right. But if you think that's gonna stop me from shooting my mouth off, you can just... What is it? I forget what it is. Forget about it! That's the one! Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy and the capo with the gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he'd take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite. Wasn't much along till the mob all wants him dead. So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds. The feds would say they helped if they could use him as a pawn. So he ratted out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. One, two, three, four, I declare a thumb war. <laughs> okay, 12 nothing. Hey, Ma, I just saw Petey upstairs with one of them magazines where nobody's got no clothes on. What? Peter Frampton McDougal, you stop right now. No son of mine is washing with the devil's hands, so... All right, that worked. She's gone. Listen, I got a line on something big. Really? Sounds big. First things first. Every time I hatch a scheme, you two Gavones cut me out. Not this time. Either I'm in all the way, or I keep this to myself. Isn't she cute? Playing hardball like her old man. Okay, it's a deal, sweetie. All right. You know Al Capone, eh? Only the architect of modern crime. I love his work. Truly an inspiration. Well, he ran a bootlegging operation from a town near here. He dug all these tunnels to hide from the cops, and that's where his famous secret vault is. You kidding me? What's this town called? Moose Jaw. Look, Gina, there's no town called Moose Jaw. It's just a crazy made-up name, like Albuquerque. What do you know? The kid's onto something. There's one thing I don't get. What's that? Fractions, Jimmy. I never understood fractions. <laughs> Hey, Anna, what's wrong? I'm just feeling down, because no one ever asks me out. How do I get someone to ask me out? Sorry, I have no frame of reference. Well, of course not. You can get any guy you want without even trying. Heck, I even get guys I don't want without even... Yamahama, who's that? Oh, his name is Johnny. Can't talk, lusting. Okay, bye. Hey. Hello? Is somebody there? There sure is. I'm Teresa. Teresa. From Mr. Henderson's class. You showing up twice and getting straight A's. Guilty as charged. Wanna frisk me? No thanks. What's wrong with you? I'm hot. Are you blind or something? Hello? Oh, thank God. You can't see. I thought it was me. Yep. Lucky you. How about you and I... Uh... This is weird. I usually seal the deal with hay. Sorry, no offense, but I like women with brains. Ideas, something going on upstairs? Come on over to my house. We'll get something going on upstairs. Oh, so it's not enough you blind people get all the best parking. Now you think you're too good for me? Well, I'm too good for you, mister! Who am I kidding? I am so in love. I'm starting to enjoy these clandestine meetings, Jimmy. The subterfuge, the intrigue, the covertness of it all. Me too. And by the way, if Cookie ever asks, we meet here every night. Anyway, I need permission to go out of town. Impossible. Your witness protection agreement strictly forbids it. But it's really important. Important? How so? Um, all right, I'll level with you. Cheech built himself a rocket. He's always been a, what do you call it, amateur rocket. Rocketeer, yes. So, we was going to go out to the woods and launch the thing. We don't want to do it in the city and blow our cover. James McDougal, I know you well enough to know when you're telling a lie, and frankly, this one is a doozy. All right, you got me. We just want to go to Moose Jaw. We hear the tacos are pretty good. Moose Jaw? 
That's hardly out of town. It's just down the road, practically a suburb. Permission granted. For Canada! And naming cities when you're drunk! What are you doing? I'm in love with the blind guy, so I'm trying to learn sign language. Ah. Uh... But it's useless. I should just forget about him. He only dates smart girls. I faked a lot of things in my life, but never smarts. All right, Petey. I searched your room, the attic, and the garage. Where's the pornography? Mother, I don't have any pornography. Don't give me that. If you've got porn, you're a pervert. And if you don't have porn, then why the hell don't you have porn? Because boys your age have porn. That's not to say I don't know my way around a woman's body. Ew. What I don't get is how the kid knows where Capone's vault is. I told you, I'm only doling out information on a need-to-know basis. This kid, she kills me. Al Capone's tunnels. I'm impressed, and I'm not easily impressed. Hey, look. Cows. What? Cows? Whoa, would you look at that? Cows, Jimmy, look. Jimmy. Just being in the same place Al Capone hung out has got me all excited. I've been excited since we pulled out a vagina. Yeah, me too. So let's get to it already. Crack open a sewer cover, let's find them tunnels. Tree, please. <laughs> all right, we're in. All right, you mugs. I'm your tour guide, see? You do as I say, see? One wrong move and you get it, see? <laughs> Who does this punk think he is ordering us around? Take it easy, it's part of the show. Let's start the tour, see? This way to Al Capone's tunnels, see? If he says see again, I'm blowing his head off. Did Capone dig these tunnels himself? No, they were dug by Chinese immigrants working under terrible conditions. Terrible, I tells ya. Did the Chinese then use these tunnels to deliver food? Pull back. The bolt should be somewhere around here. Again, how does she know all of this? Shut your pie hole and make yourself useful. <laughs> Careful, my soft spot. It's this one. For the last time, how the hell does she know all of this? Al Capone's treasure. Get ready to be rich! Whoa! It's actually Al Capone! This is unbelievable. That's it? That's the treasure? What a f***ing rip-off! go through all this trouble, and what do we get? Jewels, cash, gold? No, a stinking Al Caponsico. Hey, a little respect for a dead homie. Oh my god, you're alive! Oh my god, you're fat! Hey, is that nice? I thought we were having a state in the obvious contest. Who the heck are you, Muggs? I'm Jimmy. This is my Uncle Cheech. I'm your biggest Jimmy, Mr. Uncle. I'm Gina. I'm the one who sprung ya. You. You're a legend to us gangsters everywhere, Mr. Capone. Thanks. Why don't you call me Al? So, fellas, we back in business? Uh, the short answer is no. The word no makes me sour, Jimmy. Give me the long answer. Well, for starters, it's the 21st century. You pulling my leg? I got into that contraption in 1932. I was facing hard times, see? One day, my associate Frank Nitty found a hobo who looked just like me. It was like looking in a mirror, see? So I offered him a thousand beans to do my time for me. This egghead who made booze for me invented a freezing machine. He wanted to use it to freeze cats up, but I had another idea. Thaw me when they paroled a the hobo. <coughs> I wonder what happened to that fella. So you two are gangsters, eh? I could use a couple of mugs like you. I'm gonna start over, she. You two are getting in on the ground floor. It's the second coming of Al Capone. How does two grand a year sound? Really? You want us to work for you? You're darn tootin'. First things first, we gotta find a supplier for our whiskey. Uh, booze is legal now. They repealed prohibition. Damn that, Roosevelt. You get his. Well, they're still gambling girls, all sorts of rackets. Stick with me, boys, and know what I'm doing. You are 11 kilometers from Regina. This gal sounds like a real dish. Thanks, little lady. What do you say we meet up over Manhattan, and I'll tell you a thing or two? Prepare to exit right. Fine, be that way. Boy, 21st century dame sure can give you the hi-hat. Your face feels very handsome. Teresa, I'm supposed to do that to see what you look like. Oh. Oh, right. What's your finger reading? Shakespeare. Sh 
Shakespeare, born in Stratford on Avon? You know, that's where makeup comes from. Teresa, look. I'm flattered, but when it comes to girls, it's what's inside that counts. I don't care about looks. Oh, my God. You're into fat chicks. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah? Well, as the saying goes, turn me down once, shame on me. Turn me down twice, go to hell! Ladies and gentlemen, girls and boys, I present to you Mr. Al Capone! Nice to meet you, Mr. Capone. I'm Bonnie, and this is Clyde. Over there is Amelia Earhart. <laughs> Something tells me she's giving me the business. Let's break out the good china before John Dillinger gets here. I am so sorry about that, Al. Hey, if I weren't me, I wouldn't believe I was Al Capone either. Now be a doll and fix me a gimlet, will you? I have no idea what a gimlet is. Well, kid, once we're back in business, I'll teach you to mix a hundred different drinks. You know, she'll make a good cigarette girl. I ain't gonna be no girl in short skirts for nobody. I got bigger plans. You got moxie, kid. All right, I'll find something for you in the organization. Stick with me and you'll be Charlie Potatoes. Now you're talking my language. Here, have a beer. Beer in a can? How do you like that? How do you open this thing? Can you believe this? We're gonna work for Al Capone! You think the Mountie will let us do that? We don't need him. We'll be big shots in the new Capone organization. We'll be on opposite sides of the law like nature intended. Oh, wait. We can't work for Capone. He'll find out I was a rat and he'll deal with me the Chicago way. Well, uh, what does that mean? He's gonna kill you with a lot of wind? I'm talking a baseball bat to the head. He can't ever know. And the only way to make sure he never finds out is to tell him we can't work for him. Damn. Come on, Jimmy. He's a stand-up guy. If he learns it straight from you, he'll respect your honesty. Have I ever steered you wrong? How can you even say that with a straight face? <laughs> What's wrong? Blind boy is treating me like a stereotype. He can't see how hot I am, so he thinks there should be more to me. I said, duh, you just need eyes. Then he got all mad, stormed off, and fell into a fountain. For starters, maybe you should stop calling him blind boy. Okay, fine. But how do I snare this blind boy? I mean, cripple. First, go back to blind boy. Second, stop trying to act smart. Stop acting anything. Just be yourself. I don't know what that means. Well, if you don't know, how's he supposed to know? I found this in the bathroom. Tell me something, Petey. When Jesus comes back, do you want him to see you abusing your body like that? Do you want our Lord and Savior standing over you while you're slapping the salami like some kind of depraved zoo monkey? Mom, it isn't... Oh, you expect me to believe that, do you? Well, just know this. Whenever you think you're alone, Mama's watching. That won't cause problems later in life. All right, Jimmy, if we're gonna run a 21st century business, I need to learn your 21st century gizmos. Show me something. Listen, Al, there's something I gotta tell you. What's this? It's a cellular telephone, but Al... A telephone? How do you like them apples? Operator, get me Klondike A21. Hello? Hello? That's Chloe Dame sleeping on the job. Al, I really got it. Look at that! You got moving pictures in your living room. It's called a television, but... Who's your colored kid talking? He's the President of the United States. I like you, Jimmy. You make me laugh. Look, Al, I gotta tell you something. Cheech and me, we thought it over. And we can't work for you. Come on, Jimmy. You can't back out now. I need you. It's just that I done some terrible things. We all done terrible things. That's what makes us so good at our jobs. No, but this one's really, really bad. Even you wouldn't approve. Come on, Jimmy. You think I didn't do stuff I wasn't proud of? I once shot my boss's dog. I had to. I shot my boss and the pooch on the whole thing. Now, come on. Tell your Uncle Al what you did. Well, promise you won't get mad? I give you my word. You no good stool pigeon! You gave me your word! I don't gotta keep my word to you, she! You're a squealing little squealer, you low-down rat! Not the words I choose, but yes. But you said you needed me, Al! You call me Mr. Capone! There's rules in this racket, and you broke them, she! Damn it! Mr. Capone, come on! Don't do this! Go ahead and shoot, cause I won't rest until you pay for what you've done. I can't do it. Then I'll be back. For blood. Uh, your blood. Yeah, no, I got it. Hey, Jimmy. Don't sneak up on me like that! 
It's just me. What do you mean, just me? Did he tell you to say that? What's wrong with you? Al Capone's trying to kill me. Jimmy, I put up with a lot. But give me a break. That guy is not Al Capone. Yes, he is. We went through these tunnels in this other city and found him cryptomagnetically frozen. What? You went out of town and he didn't take me? Where's Uncle Al? He's not your uncle, but if you see him coming, whistle twice and throw Cheech in front of me. Gina, switch seats. I want my back against the wall. Bob, that was a car backfiring. Sounded like a shot. I know the difference. Look, Pop, for the record, if it comes down to it, I'm on Capone's side. I don't blame you, kid. With me out of the way, you're gonna need a father figure. Jimmy, this can't go on. You're hiding in like a little girl. No offense, Gina. Up yours. You're intimidated by the fact that he's a legend. Think of him as just a guy who puts on his underwear one hole at a time. You're right. He's just a guy. I can take just one guy. Hell, I could take ten guys. In a fight, I want to be clear on that. Interesting outfit, Jimmy. Shh, you hear that? What? What is it? It's too quiet. I don't like this. What are you talking about? needed a city map. Check out the water slide. It's a lot of fun. Eat up, men. There's plenty more where this came from. Boy, this is the best barbecue sauce I've ever eaten. Who made it? I did. I got the recipe from Barbecue Build. What's in it? What's in it? Why, I'll tell you the recipe. When Barbecue Bill left the Mounties, he handed it down to me. A little of this, a little of that, a piece of old shoe, a part of a hat. Mix together and eat your fill, said old barbecue bill. <laughs> Who could this be from? <laughs> you gotta help me, McCool. Someone's trying to kill me. My God, who? Al Capone. I left my Mountie barbecue for this? I'm serious. We found him underground in Moose Jaw in a big block of ice. Now he's out there stalking me and he wants my blood. Hmm, this is indeed serious. We must get you to safety before Al Capone finds you and does his worst. There, there, Jimmy. We'll find a safe haven for you. Thanks, McCool. I know I could count on you. Ah! No, God! You can't lock me up! He'll get to me in here! Nothing stops this guy! This is for your own good, Jimmy. Obviously, the strain of relocation has gotten to you. The doctor assures me that a strenuous regimen of enemas and testicular electroshock will put you right in no time. Yo, no one's zapping my boys. You're too far gone to realize it, but I am your friend, and I will see you through this. Pipe in some Kenny G to soothe the poor man. to talk. <sighs> Teresa, please. Put down your bumpy book. I got something to say. All right. What is it? You will write about me. The truth is, I don't know who I am. I look to other people to define myself like some crazy one-way mirror. And I'm always afraid that if I don't live up to what they want me to be, they'll ignore me or not pay any attention to me at all. Wow. Underneath the makeup, the fashion, the unbridled sexuality, you're just a scared little girl. And you're the first boy I've ever met who wants to know that girl. Oh, Teresa, come here. Yamahama, who's that? Doc, I'm fine. As soon as they come, now you gotta let me out of here. Yeah, all right, Jimmy boy. You outsmarted.
Ew. Come with me if you want to live. I thought you was on Capone's team. What am I gonna do? You're my pops. Besides, Capone's broke. He's a schmuck. Nurse, you gotta help me. Someone's trying to kill me. Oh, crap. I got an apple to peel with you, Buster. Al, be reasonable. I'm wearing a dress. Reason went out the window days ago. We have a code, Shane. You broke that code. Hold on. According to the code, if someone saves your life... Hold on. I got it right here. If someone saves your life, you have to recipro... Recipro... Sound it out, honey. Reciprocate. It means never try to kill them. Let me see that. Well, what do you know? Can't argue with the code. Well, I guess we're even. Put it there, Pally. Thanks a lot, Al. Let's dust out of here. I guess this is where we part ways. But what will he do? Where will you go? Every time there's a buck to be made for illegal hooch, I'll be there. Every time a lonely young girl comes to the big city for the first time, I'll be there to force her into prostitution. Every time a truck leaves a warehouse full of valuables, by God, Jimmy, I'll be there. Goodbye, Uncle Capone. So long, Al. Oh. Come now, Jimmy, we've got to make you sane. Doctor, fire up the electroshock room. Jimmy, drop your pants. Uh, uh. Saskatchewan, la 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 Good evening. My name is Peter McDougal. At least it is now. I have also been called a geek, a nerd, a geeky nerd, a nerdy geek, and a geeky geeky nerd nerd. But for most of my life, I've been known as P.D. Falcone, son of Jimmy Falcone one of New York's most notorious mobsters. But despite what you may have read about my father, he's actually been a very loving man who would do anything for his family. Strike three, you're out! Uh, I mean, home run! But then one day, the mob turned against him, as mobsters are prone to do. And they didn't care if they got any of us in the process. But he protected his family and heroically helped convict some of the most horrible men in the country, all of whom were at my communion. And that's how we wound up here, in witness protection in Regina, Regina, Saskatchewan. And if any of you think this story wasn't just one humongous rationalization, forget about it. Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy and the capo with the gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he'd take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite. Wasn't much along till the mob all went in dead So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds The feds would say they helped if they could use him as a pawn So he ratted out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan Forget about it Forget about it Forget about it Oh, forget about it I got here as soon as I could, Jimmy What seems to be the problem? I miss pizza I beg your pardon. You made it sound like an emergency. It is. See, I'm in this weekly poker game, and the guys order these pies, like ketchup on cardboard, and not the good kind. So I was shooting my mouth off and promised to show them real pizza. So I'm kind of committed. You should be committed. And where do you intend to get these pies? That's the beauty part. I know this place back home, best pizza outside of Italy. And they promise delivery in 30 minutes so they're free. So odds are we won't even have to pay. I'm sorry, no. Such an order may tip off your enemies. As for poker, need I remind you of the pitfalls of gambling? Aw, oh, man, don't you do anything for fun. I absolutely do. I fish, I hunt, I read, I enjoy the occasional menage a trois, I dabble in embroidery and crochet, but what I don't do is gamble. A hundred bucks says you do. Hmm. All right. I know your secrets. It's time you learned one of mine. Whoa! I don't want to know who you manage a toi with. Imagine, if you will, a young McCool. Aimless, directionless, muscleless. And then he discovered 
the wager. At first it was just harmless games of gin rummy for a penny a point, but soon that wasn't enough. It had to be a quarter, a dollar, a hundred, nor did it matter what the game was. Cards, dice, ponies, pigs! Why do you look like a hippie if it was the 90s? Stay on topic, Jimmy. Never in my life had I felt such a rush. I was hooked. I'd go on week-long binges and forget to feed horse. I put my sainted mother in a home and lost her rent money at the track. I turned my back on almost everyone I cared about, and they me. And I was about to lose the only one I had left. Don't go. Without you, I have no one. You're right, I'll never bet again. I know I've said this before, but this time I mean it. Yes, really. And that was the moment I vowed to put my life together. The moment I decided to be a Mountie. And I have not wagered a penny since. I just got one question. What kind of landlord lets you keep a horse in your apartment? Indeed. For Canada! And flashbacks that remain relevant to the storyline! Isn't it a glorious day in Regina? The sun is shining, the snow is melting. One can look out and see endless miles of wheat and wheat. What's up with you? Petey's got a girlfriend. Shut up! Oh, a girlfriend. Tell me about her. Her name's Rita. They kissed in the parking lot behind Mrs. McGeeby's car. Shut up! Ow! Don't ever tell me to shut up. Hello? Yes, Petey's here. Who may I say is calling? Oh, Rita! Petey speaks so highly of you. Mother, no! He speaks highly of us, too. Oh, get the f*** out of here! Mom! Ow! What was that for? Don't ever hit my big brother, you little squirt! Okay. Thanks, Gina. That was really... Toolbox. What? Toolbox! Uh, okay. So, Rita, what are you doing next Sunday? Would you like to come for family dinner? Rita, say no! Run! Good, we can't wait to meet you. Bye bye Oh, did you want to talk to her? That's okay. I'm gonna go take a bath. Race five. Schwa, schwa. So sorry to disturb, Premier. These documents just arrived from Ottawa for your immediate attention. Keep your knickers on, laddie. I'm playing. Put them with the others. All right, Jimmy, you Scottish bastard. It'll cost you five more if you want to see my cards. Or do you not have the balls, you nutless lassie? I see your five and raise another five. Fold. Read them and weep. Kings and nines. Three ladies. Sounds like my crib every night. hey oh. <gasps> Grab a chair, McCool. We need some fresh blood. Uh, thank you, sir, but I don't gamble. Come on, McCool. The engine's taking everything we got. And how often do you hear that? Fellas, if the man don't gamble, the man don't gamble. Schwa, schwa. Where I come from, the only man who don't gamble are ladies. Well, I suppose one hand won't hurt. Uh, Jimmy, I'm a little short on cash. Would you extend a man a small loan? <laughs> you sure you want to do this? What about everything you said the other day? I've been thinking about that these past few seconds. I haven't gambled in almost 15 years. Clearly a man with a gambling problem couldn't achieve that. Okay, I'll give you a friendly loan at 18%, but this is business. No one's gonna take it easy on you, not even me. Jimmy, if I enter that game, it's you and the others I'd be worried about. Any up, boys, it's my deal. Gentlemen, I don't even have to look at the cards. I look into your eyes and I know what's in your mind. You want us to think you made your straight, but you never got the nine. You made your trip sevens, but you don't know if they're good enough. You're bluffing with an ace-king high and you're cheating on your wife. You're disgusting. Now I know my ABCs. Next time won't you sing with me? <laughs> I see your ten and raise ten more. What are you doing? Nothing. Just a long blink. Open your eyes. No. All right. I still think you're bluffing. Call. Full house. And finish blink.
Raise 500, and that should send you home. Jimmy, you just walked into my trap. I see your 500, and I raise you 10,000. <gasps> Bloody Ouch. hell! Ouch! Buddy, you're already into me deeper than you want to be. What's the matter? Are you chicken? McCool, you don't got this one. Buck. Buck, 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 buck. You started strong, but now Lady Luck is banging another guy. Oink, 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 oink. Just walk away. Moo, moo. Who you calling a cow? All right, you got it. Ten G's more. Four kings. Four aces. What? You owe me 50 large, special agent. I, I, I don't have it. Then I'll put you on a plan. In the meantime, I'll take some collateral. No, not horse. What have I done? <clears throat> I tried to warn you, buddy. Now I own you. For Canada! And... <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll just walk him out from here. Hey, Cheech, I'm making a list of stuff to ask for from McCool. He can't pay us back, so he's got to let us do whatever we want. What should I put you down for? A puppy. You don't need McCool for that. You can get a puppy anyway. Can I? No because I'd have to walk it and clean up after it. I'm thinking more like taking a family on a cruise. Me included? Yeah, you included. Then who's gonna watch the puppy? There is no puppy! Jimmy, what kind of sad childhood did you have that you hate puppies? Hi, I need your help. How do I get Rita out of coming for dinner? Why do you want to do that? Because she's Persian, and you know how our family is with people who are different from them. Well, what's wrong with being Persian? Everyone loves Paris! No, not Parisian. Persian. Iranian from Iran. Oh, you mean like one of those chicks who straps bombs on her chest and goes into nightclubs? I never got that look. No, that's what I'm talking about. That's racist. You take that back. Racism is ugly, and I'm pretty. Mom, Petey said we're racist. And I'm pleased to say I am no longer gambling, and I'm ready to pay my debt. You're a little light. Uh, the ATM was out. Bank messed up the transfer. Checks in the mail? You don't think we heard these before? Dog ate it. He has a dog? All right, I don't have it all. But I'm doing the best I can. I understand. It's a lot of money to get all at once. So, in lieu of cash, there's a number of favors you can do for us. That's blackmail! You owe me 50 Gs from gambling. Want to take that up with your supervisor? Jimmy, please, don't do anything rash. I've taken on a whole array of extra jobs. I'll get you your money by any means necessary. Except crime. How do you make money without crime? Indeed. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have work to attend. I miss you, old friend. <coughs> I deserve as much, but I shall get you back. For Canada! Oh, where these boots are made for walking. Are you satisfied with your long-distance carrier? at the newsstand. I don't believe it. I know! They printed my letter! Not that. That's McCool on the cover. I can't believe he'd stoop this low for money. It's really sad. Jeez. I don't know if I should feel bad for the guy or intimidated. There you are. Did you know your son is ashamed of us? What? Petey, get down here! Yes, Pop? Your mother says you're ashamed of us. What the hell's that about? Okay, I'll be honest. This girl I like is coming to dinner, and she's Middle Eastern, and I'm terrified that you, one of you, most likely you, will offend her, and she'll come to hate me for it. Petey, you gotta relax about this stuff. When I was growing up in the old neighborhood, we was all everything. We was all friends. It didn't mean nothing. We called each other Dagos and Hebes and Mix and N-words. You actually used the N-word? Yeah, but only to their faces, never behind their backs. 
That would be insensitive, something a spick would do. Ugh. You see? Your father makes good sense. Mother, a turban? Really? It's not a turban, it's a towel. Yeah, what's wrong with having a towel head? You guys are killing me. Nobody's killing nobody. Just let me frisk this girl when she gets here. No bomb, no problem. Special Agent McCool can't come to the door right now. Please leave a message in the mailbox. We know you're in there, McCool. No, you don't. He's got a point, Jimmy. Can anyone ever really know anything? McCool, you can't avoid us. It's your job to take care of us. My next payment isn't due until tomorrow. We ain't here for the money. Oh, in that case, may I interest you in some Helen DiCarlo cosmetics? Jeez, you look like hell. Have you lost height? Let me go get my samples. I'll be right back. Look at him, Cheech. He's a shadow of his former self. No dignity, no self-respect. He's given up on everything he cares about. And it's my fault. So? Just saying. All right. Who wants moisturizer? McCool, sit down. You know that list of requests we gave you? I think we was thinking too small. First, we'd like to go visit the old neighborhood. Jimmy, you know that's impossible. Then pay up. Fine. I'll work it out. Also, maybe a cruise. Fine. And a puppy. Fine. No puppy! Fine. Come on, McCool, pull yourself together. You're making me feel bad. Where's our usual back and forth of Tony Banta? You know what, Jimmy? You're right. Good, let's get back to it. So, if they do another one of those private rocket ships to outer space, I think Petey would like that. No, no to everything. It all stops now. Yeah, this is what I like. You and me going at it, mambo a mambo. Now my turn. You want me to take this up with your supervisor? You don't have to, Jimmy. I will pay you what I owe you, but I will besmirch my uniform no more. As of tomorrow, I will resign my commission as a Mountie. Holy hell. Bum bum bum. Jimmy, look at this. I'm talking to a squirrel. Bum bum bum. <laughs> I mean, you should have seen the guy. I know it's hard to imagine, but he looked bad. Real bad. It is hard to imagine. <laughs> I never should have lent a guy with a gambling problem all that money, and then I pushed him on top of it. He's a stand-up guy for a cop. He's always been fair to us, and we could do a lot worse. Even his quitting shows a little back bacon. That's how they say it in Canada. Jimmy, are you developing a conscience? Conscience? Nah. I just got this inner sense of right and wrong that's impelling me toward moral action. What are you saying? I broke him, so I gotta fix him. I'm gonna let him off the hook. Wipe the slate clean. You really are a lovable teddy bear. Yeah, don't tell anyone. Mommy! Daddy! I can't sleep! What's wrong, sweetheart? I heard you and Daddy talking through the wall, and Daddy says he's gonna let someone who owes him money not pay? I don't understand! <laughs> I'm scared! Oh, sweetie, there's nothing to be scared of. The man owes me more money than he's got, and it's destroying him. He's doing it again, Ma! He's doing it again! <laughs> oh, sweetie, it's a sin to let others suffer. Oh, like a hurt animal? Then we gotta do the Christian thing and put him out of his misery. Let's whack him. Aw, oh, Gina. That's very generous of you, Jimmy. I would be forever in your debt, and so I cannot accept. No strings, honest. And the blackmail stops. You can stay a Mountie. It's more complicated than that. To recover from my addiction, I have to take responsibility for my actions, even if that means doing shameful, shameful things. Eh, no one's gonna buy that magazine. Really? Tell me the truth, Jimmy. Do you find me attractive? Okay, we're not going there. Isn't there anyone you'd be willing to take help from? Only a true loved one. But I have no siblings. Daddy left when I was very young and Mummy lost her marbles. All I had was horse. Tell you what, don't quit your Mountie thing just yet. Give me till the end of the week. Can you sign this? Certainly. You want a party? Certainly not. Well, define party. I still don't get it. It's simple. McCool won't let me forgive his debt, so he's just gonna have to find the money on his own. He'll give it back to me, and everybody's square. I have found a satchel of money on the street. It must be returned to its rightful owner. What an asshole. I can't believe it. 
You try to help a guy and it bites you in the ass. Well, you know what they say. Try to help a guy and it bites you in the ass. The funny thing is, I still want to figure out a way to help him. I'll get it, I'll get it. Hi, Petey. Thanks for inviting me. Is that her? I'll be right out. Look, there's no time to explain. Just don't judge me by my family. And whatever happens, I'll protect you. And no, I have no idea why there's a horse in our living room. Hi, you must be Rita. I'm Cookie. She's adorable. Yes, she is, yes, she is. Come sit. Dinner will be ready in about 10 minutes. So, Rita, tell me about yourself. What would you like to know? I don't know what I'd like to know. What do your parents do? I knew it. Just because she's from the Middle East, you automatically assume her parents must be terrorists or taxi drivers. I never said... My father is a dentist and my mother is a stay-at-home mom. And no, it's not because her father will punish her mother if she works, thank you very much. Two of my wives were stay-at-home moms. Well, without the kids. <laughs> Basically, they were leeches. <laughs> Your uncle's funny. Not really, just retarded. So, Rita, are you thinking about college yet? Why? Because Muslim women aren't allowed to go to school? They're just supposed to stay home and be subservient to their man? Is that what you're asking? I give up. Jimmy, you want to ask her anything? Okay. Rita, say something you did is destroying a guy, and all you want to do is make peace. But he don't want peace. He just wants to keep the same old pattern going. What do you do? What's that supposed to be? Some warped metaphor of the Arab-Israeli conflict? Rita, hi. I love what you're wearing. What'd you expect? You people! What, she was supposed to show up in a burqa and a turban going... Petey, enough! Can you talk about anything other than my race? Me? Race? That's it, a race! Yes, Petey, I'm Persian, and that's all you can see. But I'm a real person with real feelings, and you've done nothing but make me uncomfortable since I got here. I'm sorry, Mrs. McDougal. You all seem lovely, but I don't think I can stay for dinner. And by the way, there's nothing wrong with driving a taxi. It's an honest, decent living. And yeah, I lied. My father drives a taxi. You dirty, racist snob. <laughs> One way or another, them Arabs always explode. Look, he won't take the money from me. If I just give it to you, he'll know it came from me anyway. You gotta get this money on your own. I know he broke his promise to you and you're mad, but he's your best friend and you're all he's got. So you can stay mad at him or you can help him. His life is in your hands. Or you can keep bunking with Cheech for the rest of your life. <laughs> Whoa! I've never been with a four-legged broad, but I'm open to anything. Don't kiss, please don't kiss. La 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 how you doing? I'm Jimmy McDougal, but I used to be Jimmy Falcone, a respected New York businessman in the gangster and gangster-related industries. Then I whacked my boss and ratted out everyone I knew to save my uncle's life. Now, ratting out the mob is not as glamorous as you think. 
Before the trial, they stick you in a federal safe house on an army base so no one can get to you. But that doesn't mean they don't try. Jimmy, you killed the dawn. A simple apology ain't gonna cut it. Hey, I offered to do the eulogy. I wasn't the one who said that's in bad taste. It was the family consigliere. His coming to see me could only mean danger, but it was still nice to have a visitor. You know, Jimmy, back in the Roman Empire, and in Godfather 2, when somebody messed up the way you just did, they were given a way to provide for their wife and kids for the rest of their lives. All he had to do was kill themselves before the trial. Over my dead body, you son of a bitch! Said with all respect, you a man in your position. Look, Jimmy, I've always liked you. In fact, I went to the mat for you to help your family. Help me help you. Wow, when does the guy who doesn't like me get here? Listen, it'll be very embarrassing for me to go back and say you won't honor this request. If you don't do this, I will dedicate my life to hunting you down. You and your family will never know a moment's peace the rest of your days. How about the nights? Can we get the nights off? It was the hardest decision I ever had to make. All right, I'll do it. Pass it over. Turns out, it was an easier decision than I thought. So, here I am with my wife and kids alive and well in vagina... Regina. ...Saskatchewan. But if you don't think that's pretty much the same as being dead, forget about it. Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy and the capo with the gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he'd take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite. Wasn't much along till the mob all went in dead. So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds. The feds would say they helped if they could use him as a pawn. So he ratted out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. Jimmy Falcone has done it. He has won the Masters. He wears the green jacket. He wishes it was a blue jacket to offset his eyes, but whatever. Let's hear from the champion. I knew that if there was a day without snow, that I could win this. I did it for my wife, Cookie. Cookie! Cookie! Breakfast is ready. What's your problem? The sun's shining, temperatures above zero? You know that ain't gonna last. I'm off to the food court at the mall to hang out, but not eat. You are not going out dressed like that, young lady. There's a reason they call you privates privates. Fine. God. I'll be at the science center. They have a new exhibit on nanotubes. Petey, what did I tell you about hanging around those kinds of places? Don't ask, don't tell. I'll be home in time for dinner. I'm not making dinner, and don't be late. You okay, Cook? Like you care. All right, Jimmy. I dusted off the clubs. I've been working on my swing. Get a load of this. Who's handicapped now, you son of a bitch? Save it for the course, Cheech. Tea time's in 20, and no way I'm gonna be late. Oh, sure, go have your fun. I'll just stay here and do what I did yesterday, and the day before, and the day before that. Nothing. All right, well, try to find some time for yourself. Don't you get it? I'm bored out of my mind. I can't talk to my friends, my sister. There's no good shopping. I'm going crazy here. Well, you got to do something. Find a hobby, like I got golf, or get a job. One of those will shut you up. But what am I supposed to do? I ain't worked since we got married. What about back when we was kids that summer in Atlantic City? You had a job then, and you were very respected in the community. You mean a fortune teller's assistant? Yeah. Working for Madam Scamia. Oh, I love that job. That cute little kiosk on the boardwalk, all those scarves you got to wear, talking European, not having to shave. <laughs> those were good times. So why don't we open your own shop here in Vagina? Oh, I couldn't. I don't have the gift. Madam Scamia, she had the gift. She could see things years into the future. She was a special, special lady with a God-given talent. We could fake it. I could do that. Then it's settled. We'll dip into the nest egg, find you a nice place, and get you all set up. But first, I ain't missing this gorgeous weather. Come on, Cheech, let's hit the links. You know what, baby? Your needs come first. 
Okay, Teresa, you're at reception. You distract the clients. Gina, you pick their pockets and get their info. Cheech is on sound. Jimmy, your lights and smoke machine. All right, let's do a practice run. Teresa, you be the customer. Hello, I'm the customer. I would like to know my fortune. Madam Cookie will tell you what she sees. Please, sit. Testing. Testing. I am the ghost of the dead person that you know. Not yet, Cheech. Just the mood music to start. And don't say testing. <coughs> Down a notch on the smoke machine, Jimmy. Her name is Teresa McDougal. Your name is Teresa McDougal. She lives at 1234 Jim Carrey Lane. You live at 1234 Jim Carrey Lane. She is 25 years of age. You're 25. What? 25? <gasps> Gina, you weren't supposed to pick my fake ID. Mom's gonna kill me now. No, I'm not. I can appreciate a good fake ID. I went to my first bar when I was seven. Okay, everyone, clients will be coming soon. Teresa, show a little more cleavage. Jimmy, thank you so much for this. I'm so happy. I feel like I was born to do this. Hey, my money's gone. Gina, you stole my money. Ma told me to. No, sweetie, you misunderstood. Get their information, not their money. We're running a legitimate scam here. Can you believe it? I thought she was totally gonna read me out about my fake ID. Yeah, and I thought she was gonna make me give you back your money. I know, right? Wait, hey! Oh, girls, where are my magical assistants? Just look at it, Cheech. I ain't seen Cookie this happy since that summer she was on Prozac. I know what you're up to, gentlemen, and I shan't allow it. The good citizens of Saskatchewan deserve better than to be taken in by your flim-flam confidence games. Hey, this is a legitimate business. Why, you don't believe in the supernatural? You want to know what I believe, Jimmy? I'll tell you what I believe. I believe in a Canada true north strong and free, universal health care, the metric system, the letter Z, that Saturday night was made for hockey. I believe Keanu Reeves is highly underrated. I believe if I were a woman and I didn't have the ability to wrap my legs around my neck, I would never take my boyfriend to see Cirque du Soleil. I believe in football with three downs, two fours of beer and maple syrup. And I believe that Rush is the single greatest band of all time. Uh, so we can stay open? I believe we're about to find out. Customer! You can try to distract me all you want, Teresa, but until you reach legal age, I see only your face. Nice eyes. Bad me, bad. You'd better not be trying to pick my pocket, young Gina. When I grow up, I want to be a Mountie just like you. You and 30 million other Canadians. Oh, Special Agent McCool, my very first customer. You look so dapper today. Oh, that doesn't make you psychic, Cookie. It only makes you observant. No, you look good enough to eat. I'd love to put you on a cracker. Or a cookie. <laughs> Take it easy, you big idiot. I'm just buttering up the customer. Let's cut to the chase, Cookie. Stop that. We'll have none of that cheesy light and sound show here, thank you. All right, Madam Cookie, it's just you and me now. Dazzle me. I see... I see... red? Your favorite color is red? I, I, I see leaves, uh, oak leaves, green leaves, a maple leaf. You're very patriotic. Just as I thought. You're a fake, a phony, a fraud. You leave me no choice but to shut you down. No, 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 I can do this. Uh, you're having lunch. The menu is in a foreign language you don't understand. Uh, the milk in your tea is sour. A uh, baby cries. A uh, waiter drops a tray. There's a mouse tail in your soup. Uh, a homely woman in a blue dress asks you for change. That's so general it can apply to anyone. Not the standard Mandarin dialect that I studied in college. The milk for your tea is sour. Oh, I'm sure it's just a coincidence. Baby cries. Waiter drops a tray. 
a mouse tail in my soup. Impossible. You got change for a five? I can't wait to tell Cookie how he snowed that fed. Yeah. How stupid did he look? If only she could have been there. She loves a good short con more than anyone. Jimmy, you won't believe it. McCool told me all my predictions came true. I have the gift. I actually have the gift. Just like Madame Scamia. She always said I would, but I never thought I did. But I do. I have the gift. What? You think you have the gift? Word's already spreading. I'm booked solid for a week. This is terrible. What are you talking about? She has the gift. No, she doesn't. She just thinks she does because of what we did. Now we gotta keep making her predictions come true. Jeez, Jimmy, that's gonna take up a lot of time. I know, but look how happy she is. Shh! I'm getting something. Pluto will be a planet again. Okay, Jimmy, let's get to work. So if we all just keep making her think she has the gift, everything will be beautiful. But that's deceitful. A white lie is still a lie. Don't you get it? When your mother's happy, we all get to be happy. So we gotta do whatever it takes to keep her this way. No kidding. I swore this morning she didn't say a f thing. Hey, Cook, tell us about work. What kind of predictions did you make, and to whom, specifically? Oh, I can't say. Psychic client confidentiality and all that. Oh, what the hell. I told Mrs. Campbell she'd find $10 inside a new sofa. I told Mr. Peterson he'd have a scooter accident. I told Mr. Chan his son will set a new record at his hockey game. I told old lady Johnson she'll get pregnant. I got this one, Jimmy. Nothing like a nice, relaxing game of golf after a long day of bullshitting your wife. Hey, how'd you get all this time off work anyway? I found a sub. Okay, legs shoulder width apart. Slight bend at the knees. You know, Cheech, it's funny. They took away my identity. They took away my livelihood. They took away everything that made me me. But the one thing they couldn't take was this game and my love for it. Mother f c sucking! You're right, Jimmy. This is relaxing. You'll win a raffle, you'll be attacked by a goose, you'll break your leg in a freak fondue accident, you never ride a tandem bicycle. Come on, people, give me a challenge here! She was really good. Want to come over for some fondue? Sure, we'll take my bike. It's built for two. I appreciate your seeing me on such short notice, Madam Cookie. I was hoping you could help me solve a case. I never thought I'd say these words, but I can't do it. Really? Because I picture you doing it all the time. <laughs> it seems there's been a rash of convenience store robberies, and I have yet to be able to gain a description of a suspect. The only lead I have is this handkerchief. Give me a hand. Don't you need to hold the handkerchief? Shh, 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 shh. We don't have time for this. Ever. But anything you could tell me would be greatly appreciated. Of course. Let's begin. Yes, yes. I see someone. A, a man. A middle-aged man. White, slight build, dark eyes, dark short hair, and a mustache. Madam Cookie has spoken. Thank you, Madam Cookie. You've been a great help. All right, boys. We're looking for Hitler. For Canada! And Mounties shouting in unison! No! Okay, now you do me. Get a load of this! Zero chance of snow! Zero! From the Doppler 5000, no less, and I read it on the internet, so you know it's true. Let's go! Uh, I don't know, Jimmy. I'm looking at my itinerary. I got Wheel of Fortune at 10, Andy of Mayberry at 10.30, and scratching my nuts at 11. No, we gotta go now. It could snow any second. But the Doppler said it won't. I can't take the chance. If I don't get some golf in soon, I'm gonna go crazy. All I do anymore is run around town making my wife think she's a psychic. I need this! Good news, Jimmy. I scratched my nuts while you were choking me. I'm good to go. Hold it! Nobody move! 
I had a dream. Not like Petey's, I hope. Oh, English, oh, math, oh, science. Oh, oh, oh! In the dream, we were at a carnival, and the Grim Reaper shot at us seven times. It means seven attempts will be made on one of our lives. If anyone leaves this house today, they'll be in mortal danger. Come on, Cook. Dreams don't mean nothing. I had a dream once that the toilet turned into a dragon. I still sit on a john every morning. Ma, I can't stay home all day. Me either. I got a thing and a thing. I can't say more. Mother, dreams are simply manifestations of our unconscious desires. Freud says that our conscious mind keeps our primal subconscious wants and needs suppressed. Dreams merely represent the repressed urges released when we sleep. Freud also said you want to do your mom. Do you want to do your mom, Petey? Is that what you want? Do you want to do your mom? Uh... There's no good answer, so shut up! This ain't any of that science mumbo-jumbo. This is fact! I got the gift, I had the dream, and you don't mess with the spirits! So no one sets foot outside this house today. Madam Cookie has spoken. I had a dream about me, you, and your sister. We never did that one. But Pops, you can't keep us locked up in here. It's child abuse. We got stuff to do. Look, we all agreed to do this to make your mother happy. Sure, for a day or two. But I don't want to make my mother happy for any longer than that. Come on. It'd break her heart to find out she's not a real psychic at this point. But you don't understand. I'm supposed to meet the cutest guy at the library. Where we will read our brains out. And I'm supposed to go to the Regina Comic Con with Billy Allison. It's the first year they'll have two people. And I gotta do this thing. That kid's not gonna break his own legs. Oh, you think I like this any more than you? I wanted to golf today. But if I can sacrifice what I want, you can too, all right? I said, all right? Yes. Fine. Good. I'm going back to bed. Like I'm gonna miss golf because of some stupid dream. <gasps> Careful, Jimmy. You could have killed yourself on that thing. What are you waiting for, Jimmy? Just savoring the moment, Cheech. Just savoring. Okay, legs shoulder width apart. Slight bend at the knees. Check the backswing. And... Whoa! You okay? You want to take a break? No, I'll play through. Just take the penalty. No, I can make this. You want a break now? I'll play through. I'll play through. I'll play through! I'm playing through! Hey, look at that. A little Australian boy. Sorry, mate. I need ya. Hey, Jimmy. I'm starting to think Cookie's dream may have been about you. I'm playing! God damn it! Okay. Legs shoulder width apart. Slight bend at the knees. Check the backswing and. So worth it. And where do you think you're going, young lady? Out. I don't think so. Are you trying to get yourself killed? Did you not hear a word I said earlier? I know. The dream. I'll die. Blah, blah, blah. But, Mom, I have to go. He's so cute. And he's a goalie. We met when I was fixing the hockey game. He's really good with his hands. What? We just kissed. I swear. Okay, he may have touched my boobs a little. Okay, a lot. What's third base called in hockey? You fixed the hockey game? I had to. Daddy said we had to make your predictions come true. <gasps> oh, my God. I wasn't supposed to say that. Oh, well, the cat's out of the bag. Bye. Petey, is this true? I am not going to lie to you, Mother. It is. You fixed my predictions? Every single one of them? Not me. It was Dad's thing. I didn't want any part of it. A lie is a lie is a lie. Are you trying to tell me that your father was sneaking around all over town this entire time, making every one of my predictions come true? 
Why would a person do that? Believe it or not, he thought it would make you happy. Well, you know what? It did. I've never been so happy in my whole life. And what's wrong with you <gasps> that you wouldn't? What? You're too good to lie to your mother? Uh... Get out of here. I can't stand to look at you. And you better think long and hard about your morals, mister. I can't believe that big palooka went to all that trouble just for me. That lying, conniving, manipulative sack of sh I married an angel. Jimmy, sweetie! I'm coming to talk to you! Jeez. I know what you did, Jimmy. I've been here the whole time, I swear. I know you fixed my predictions. What are you talking about? You went behind my back, you deceived me, you made our children deceive me, you played me for a fool. It's the sweetest thing anyone has ever done for me. You fucking kidding me? On the outside, you may be tough gangster Jimmy Falcone, but underneath all that macho and beef and provolone, you're just a big old teddy bear. And I don't need the gift to tell me that. So I'm gonna close the shop. After thinking I had the gift, I could never go back to faking it again. But Cookie, that's the thing. It turns out you do have the gift. That's sweet, but you can stop now. No, I'm serious. You have the gift. For real. Stop it, Jimmy. It's over. I ain't lying. Every single one of your predictions came true. Sure, we rigged a bunch of them, but they still came true. They all came true. Give it a rest, will ya? You tried to con me. It was sweet, but you're pushing it. I'm not an idiot. Cookie, I'm telling you. Now you're just pissing me off. One more word and I will cut you, you guinea bastard. Well, look at that. They made Pluto a planet again. La 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 la